the delay what's good everybody how's everyone doing today had to scarf down a little bit of food but welcome to monday happy uh new week happy beginning of the week if you are somewhere where you got some good snow i hope you're safe i hope ice is under control where you are hopefully uh you know some people got lucky you got a day off or so uh you know hopefully you got that i did not get one of those uh so i hope you're hope you're good but welcome back to another week of mastermind academy and to pipelines What's up, Penguins Airlines? First, again, as usual, ain't no profit. Good to see you, Aban. How you doing? What's up, Aya? Uh, what's up, the Joker? Uh, I see that you might be a bot or some kind of jokester. Um, I hope your wiener's okay, I guess. Um, sure. Uh, nice. Um, what's up, Arcadius? How are you doing today? What's up, Shred Ghoul? Lead DevOps, how are you doing? 18 inches. That's pretty crazy. Uh, I don't I don't know how much we got so far. It wasn't that much. It's pretty icy today. Um, enough to put my truck to work. That was that was exciting. Uh, that's another reason I get I get excited for a little bit of snow. So you know I can see you know just see what the truck can do. So I was pretty excited. But tonight, this is uh, this is a fun week. This is when we start to dive into the fun pieces of DevOps today. Will be a little less fun, especially for you all doing uh, doing Horizons. Tonight is going to be your introduction into the cloud. So for anyone who's brand new to all of this stuff, this is going to be a, a, a pretty light introduction into the cloud and distributed computing and understand how these things work. And on Wednesday, we'll be diving into CI and CD, uh, CI, CD, CD, uh, continuous integration, continuous delivery, continuous deployment. We'll probably use GitHub Actions. Um, and we'll start to, this is where we'll start to get into the, the, the coding, uh, you know, we learned a little bit about programming, but we'll, we'll get more into the, uh, configuration as code infrastructure as code type things, uh, starting on Wednesday, you know, so it should be, it should be pretty fun. Yep. That like, I, th I think that's when it gets into the good stuff all next week, we're going to be doing complete infrastructure as code with Terraform. So we're going to learn all about Terraform and build a couple things. We're going to get introduced to it on Monday and kind of you know, fill in the knowledge and get introduced and get set up and start building some some things. And then we will do a, a project with Terraform on Wednesday. And then that following week, we're gonna dive straight into Ansible and do an entire week of Ansible. So, you know, it, I think we're getting into the fun pieces of all of this, just to, again, get our, get our hands on it. The goal is not to be a perfect DevOps engineer by the end of this eight weeks, but it's to give us enough energy and enough uh, context to go into the next uh, iteration of this to be able to build more and more things as we kind of move along, but it's good to see everybody. Uh, what's up, Hik Hikaroshi? How are you doing? Tim Ayer, how are you doing? Happy Monday as well. Amame, how are you? G Billingsley, it's good to see you. Ariel Pig, welcome, welcome, welcome. So let me get you all some slides today. What's up, Propagation69? Not much shaking. Uh, w one thing that is pretty cool, so this weekend, I got to dive into uh, finishing up a lot of things, trying to get some structure underneath some of the things that I'm doing. And uh, I found that Notion, I don't know if there is any other Notion users out there. I have not set it up here on this computer yet, but there are, because Notion is an Electron app as well, you know, you need, uh, it's just it's just JavaScript. There's some pretty cool, like really cool uh, extensions and things that you can add to it. There's like a Notion enhancer documentation uh, or, or, or package that you can use to make some cool things happen. And I, I got to play with it this weekend and it's pretty dope. Uh, and I need to get it installed on all of my computers. Uh, classroom, actually hit register if you want access to the classrooms. Those classroom codes are incorrect. I need to just remove that thing there. Um, so we'll have in a classroom. I will give you the links. I'll also share the Google classroom link for, for pipelines this time around. Two things should have dropped. I think a quiz should have dropped. Yeah, there's a AWS cloud quiz and some slides here, but let me get you the slides and I'll get you the link to the classroom for anyone who does want it. So let me get the fan on just to make sure, you know, can't overheat out here. We got the 3090 in the room, making it warm, making sure we don't get too hot. Let me change this up, share this out. Miss last couple of weeks, but you're back and ready to catch up. EJW, completely okay, not a big deal at all. You know, I, I love it. Have Hopefully it's, you'll get a lot out of tonight. You can always go back and watch other videos, which last week's are not posted. Uh, I work, uh, they'll, they'll be posted soon though. They'll probably get uploaded tonight. They are all pulled uh, and they're all cleaned up. They're just not uploaded 
at all, which is trash, but you know, I got, I have more consistent internet now, so I could do that after this. So I watched last Friday. Do you think I'll be okay having missed the first few classes? Yeah. Uh, I do web dev right now, so I'm pretty comfortable programming. Yeah, 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 100%. Uh, Mike, you'll you'll be you will be completely good tonight. We, tonight we're going to be going over. And we're going to be doing an introduction to distributed computing and the cloud. Uh, I think you'll have no problem hopping in and understanding the concepts. Uh, you will not be a cloud pro after this, but it's it's a another piece of the journey into your DevOps, site reliability, engineering, dealing with infrastructure, understanding the entirety of the stack. Uh, 100%. You'll be able to follow along. No problem. All right, let me also get you the classroom link to anyone who wants the classroom link. And there you go. You can get that right there and you can hop on in there, but we got some slides and today it's really going to be around understanding and exploration. Again, we are going to use AWS as the as the cloud of choice tonight. We'll talk about why we're gonna use it as a cloud of choice. Uh, we can also hop in, you know, tonight we might also might just hop into Azure for a little bit to kind of show you some, so you can kind of have a, an immediate uh, comparison of two different cloud providers. Uh, but tonight is just understanding the distributed computing model and how kind of cloud computing works and making sure you understand how you can utilize it to solve some real problems. We will dive much deeper into it. We're gonna be doing a whole week of Terraform next week. And so this is gonna be your introduction to it, but it's not going to be all we're gonna see of it. We're gonna to have to utilize the cloud. And I'm actually I'm actually considering using Azure for uh, for the Terraform next week, uh, for all the Terraform stuff next week. Um, you know, I think, I think it might be fun to use a different cloud provider to show you that, uh, you know, it, that these tools, uh, are not incredibly like once you understand them conceptually, they're not that hard to apply to different things. All right, I want to tear from a Linode. That makes so yeah, that might be it. That might be a great. That might be an, actually. Let me see. So let me let me see how much. I need to look and see how much um, compatibility they have with all of their products. You know, I. If, if they if they have a lot of compatibility amongst their products, 100%. When I looked before, it looked like they, last time I looked, it looked like they only had a couple of things that you could do in there, uh, but they have a fair number of products. It doesn't really hurt to do it. You all have credits for that as well, so it might make it pretty easy to do. That's actually a really good idea. All right, let's get started with tonight. So all we're talking about tonight is what the cloud is and distributed computing. So what the heck is the cloud? Again, there's a lot of overlap here between this and horizons, but again, everyone is not taking that horizons course. So let's talk about it. The cloud is simply distributed networked computing resources. Sounds like four completely different words that don't really go together, but distributed meaning not in the same place, not centralized. They're all over the place. And when we say distributed now, uh, we, we not only do we mean not on the same system, but we also generally mean in completely different locations, like physical locations. Um, and they're, they're just computers that are networked together. Notice we say computing resources. We're going to talk about those. Uh, this is just because the cloud is not necessarily simply renting or, or, or it's not just the, com the, the entirety of the computer. It is access to those individual computing resources. 100% EQ Explorer. It really is just someone else's computer. Um, at the heart of it, it is, it is someone else's computer that's accessible over a network. Another uh, thing that defines the cloud is it gives you on-demand access to these computing resources without active management by the user. So the on-demand piece is a really, really important piece of the cloud. Uh, you may have a networked computer in your own home. This does not necessarily fall into the realm of uh, the cloud. Uh, could, it could, but it doesn't necessarily fall into the realm of the cloud. Uh, these are two big things, distributed network computing resources, and that you can get on-demand access uh, uh, to them without direct active management by you. You don't have to go uh, set up all the networks and things um, to make these things work. You have access to them without direct management. Now, there's there's a lot of, um, you might have a lot of control in there, uh, but you know, you may, you, the type of management they're talking about, you don't have to do the kind of hands-on management of these systems. So. We said the cloud is computing resources. It doesn't say computers. And I want to be really, really clear about that. Yes, 
it that is that is the cloud you know these network computers someone else's computer but computing resources and access to computing resources so what are computing resources and we're just going to talk about uh, some of them there are many of them but these are the pieces of a computer these are the the, the different uh the different pieces of hardware that actually make up the computer they are a finite amount of things on each system and depending on how powerful these things are it generally determines how much you are able to do so what is the cpu or compute uh, the CPU is the brain of the computer. You've probably heard of the CPU before, uh, or you've had someone talk about, you know, you might think a CPU in your head is a, uh, you know, a personal computer, a big old desktop in your head. You might be thinking that's what CPU is, but a CPU is a chip. It's a brain. It's the brain of the computer. Uh, it contains all the circuitry needed to process inputs, store data and output results. This is the processor. This is the thing that does all of the uh, logic on the computer. It's the one that's helping you make decisions that you're running everything through. Uh, it's constantly following instructions of computer programs that tell it what data to process and how to process it. Without the CPU, we could not run programs on a computer. All right, and so this is uh, on your own, your own personal, com your own computer has it, your phones have it. If you've, uh, you, have, you have a i9, an i7, an i5 on your computer, i3, these are all talking about CPUs. These are all talking about your central processing unit and they are, Again, the brain, all they really are, are a series of uh, transistors and they just allow electricity to pass through. And the, the, you know, the, the way that this electricity pass through is allows it to represent data and to be able to make some decisions based on the instructions that are given to it. Uh, the processing happens in, uh, was it, 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 so gigahertz is, you might hear, oh, I've got a 1.1 gigahertz processor. Or I've got a five gigahertz processor. Uh, these gigahertz are a, a, a billion, a billion transactions a second. They're a billion uh, logical operations per second. So each time you go up a gigahertz, uh, you are going up a, you can do a billion more things in a second than you can do at, you know, at four gigahertz to five gigahertz, it's a billion more things. So it's pretty interesting. Uh, this is the speed of the computer, this is the voltage, all the other stuff determines how powerful these things are. But this is the CPU. If you've been following all the Mac hype and you can hear about all the M1 stuff, although the M1 chips in the new Macs are, are not just uh, CPUs are actually called SOCs. They're actually an entire system on a chip, but it's mostly the 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 way that the computer is processing things. And it actually has. Notice we talked about. Um, it tells it what data to process and how to process it. This is one of the reasons why the M1 chips are such a big change because the way that they process things is different. Uh, and that's what's causing a big uproar and uh, a big shift in the way that computing is done. Uh, even though. These chips are ARM chips, ARM chips already exist, but CPU, this is the brain of the computer. This is a computing resource. We'll talk about how to access that. RAM, another important piece of the computer, equally as, uh, you know, just, just as important. Uh, RAM stands for random. Oh, it says cloud instead of cloud. You know, I just wanna make sure that people, you know, when, they, when they're coming in here, they know that we, you know, there's gonna be misspellings. As long as they know there's going to be things that are spelled wrong, uh, I want to make sure I prime them with that, but I just updated it. Thank you for the uh, the heads up on that. But RAM, RAM stands for Random Access Memory. Okay, it is a, it's an acronym for Random Access Memory, and it's only used for the temporary storage of data. Okay, so RAM actually is the first uh, kind of place of storage. It's actually very, very fast uh, storage in comparison to something like your hard drive that keeps stuff around for a long time. But it takes in the, it, basically things get passed onto onto RAM and RAM is what handles the uh, passing of the data to the processor. So that CPU, it receives its instructions and it receives the things that it's supposed to process from RAM. So the faster the RAM is, the more RAM you have uh, may help you be able to process things much faster. So that is what that is. Uh, it's very important to know that RAM is ephemeral and volatile. What does ephemeral mean? Ephemeral means it's not around for long. It's not designed to be permanent uh, at all. So the, the data that goes on RAM isn't there for you to save. You wouldn't save your documents to your random access memory. Um, it's not there for that. And it's also volatile. When you cut power to this thing, it goes away. So when you restart your computer, uh, the data that's on here goes away and you start brand new every time your computer starts. So RAM, that's what that is. Now we have hard drives, okay? And so now a bunch of things fall inside of this uh, 
inside of this storage, inside of hard drives. But unlike RAM, we said that was temporary. We said that was volatile. A hard disk drive store, even after the machine is turned off, a hard drive storage unit, uh, hard, hard drive is a storage unit for the machine. Uh, this is persistent storage, permanent storage. This is the type of storage that your operating system is installed on. This is the type of thing where you want to save files. You know, if you're doing some processing, you have an application that's doing some processing and you need to save some files on there, hard drive is where it would go. Chris, hundred uh, percent. Redis is where you would want to go if you want to run. Um, everything from RAM. Why not? You know, you could, you know, there's also ways to load up games and stuff from the VRAM on uh, GPUs. Now, you know, you could, it's very fast, but it, it will be very annoying for you to do. Uh, question is SSD or HDD. So you, you might see this a lot and it is going to be something that's going to come up in the cloud. There are differences between a hard disk drive and a solid state drive. That's what an SSD is. And you might hear about this a lot. And this is actually really good for your own personal computing. Uh, what you're seeing here on the left, this picture that you're seeing right here on the left is a traditional hard drive. It's, an, it's a hard disk drive. It is literally a, a metal platter. It's a spinning platter, magnetic platter uh, where things get written to. And these are, are, are great. Um, they have become very cheap. They're pretty large. Uh, they become very, very cheap and they allow you to store a lot of stuff on them, but the storage is, it's, they're slow. Uh, they're, they're very slow. This is, everyone wants to get a new computer and it's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get the fastest, you know, i9 and all this other stuff. Uh, but the, the biggest performance increase you are ever gonna see on your computer, for most people, uh, especially if you're on a traditional hard drive, will be to move from a hard drive to a solid state drive, which works, um, solid state drives work much more like RAM. There's a, a lot happening right now. Um, Okay, let's, um, how do I get rid of this person? Let's see, block, cool. <laughs> also, everyone who just came in, what's up Death Ranger, how are you doing? Um, what's up the deer hound, how are you doing as well? Um, I, yeah, the don't, don't know how to get rid of all their crap, but um, they're, they're they can't post anymore. Uh, let's see. One second, one second. All right. I think I got it. Oh, it's when they actually, right? Uh, yeah, we, everyone, everyone go out. First off, they pasted it a bunch of times. So even if you click on it, it won't go to where you want it to go, but it's all good. 100%. <laughs> cool. So I actually think that might be because, uh, I, you know what? I should check my email. Twitch told me about this. Twitch told me, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if something else happens and then we will, we will fix it. We'll see. We'll see if this continues to happen. Uh, there, there's a chance that we're going to get a lot of bots uh, over the next week or so, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right. So, the, like I said, that one of the biggest performance uh, ch changes that you'll see, one of the bi biggest performance benefits you will see would simply be to uh, move from a hard disk drive, a hard drive disk, whatever, to an, an SSD, to a solid state drive. Um, again, this is because the memory on there is all electric. There's no spinning parts. So much, much faster than hard disk drives, but uh, more pricey for the same capacity. So if you know, one terabyte of SSD storage is a lot more expensive than one terabyte of hard disk uh, storage. So yeah, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it is what it is. If you have a computer and it still has a hard disk, uh, you really should get it. Like you should upgrade to an SSD and see how amazingly fast your computer feels in comparison. It's actually, it's pretty substantial. Uh, but this is another resource as well. Uh, there are some other resources that aren't in here. There are things like graphics cards and graphics processing units. Okay. So that might be something that you need to do as well. Some workloads, uh, work better under for graphics processing units. Maybe you need to, uh, maybe you need to re render out some type of a uh, CAD file or blender job or something like that. Or maybe you're doing some type of machine learning. This is where the type of processing that happens in a GPU works out a little bit better. And so the cloud also gives you access to things like this. Um, and so these are, these are, there, there's other things, you know, your networks, everything. There's a bunch of different finite computing resources that, uh, that make up your computer and how it runs. 
the cloud gives you access to to these things in a, in a bunch of different services basically uh, all the cloud providers are going to offer you uh, access to different amounts of these resources packaged up in different ways to hopefully solve some type of common problem and we're going to see that when we hop into aws tonight so let's first talk about what people did before the cloud what do we do before the cloud the old way well uh before the cloud what you would do is if you wanted to serve data over the internet you'd have a pen and paper is a good one you know pen and paper is true if you want to send out a message that is how you would do it usps could be super helpful as well which would really suck right now because usps is all over the place but what you would have to do is if you had a business and you wanted to serve information to people, you would have to have a computer and you would have to attach it to a, uh, you would have to attach it to a network and you'd have to configure it with the software necessary for it to be able to serve information over the web. And it must be powerful enough to handle the traffic that you need. You must, you know, you, you gotta set all the stuff up on it and that's great. So that's cool. That might not sound crazy tough at first and it might not be, it might not be incredibly time consuming, but uh, you're running a business and let's say your business is growing. Let's say, let's say I was serving, let's say I was actually uh, hosting these streams myself off of my own servers. And let's say, you know, when, when you start out streaming, you get nine or 10 people. And you, so, so one server might be enough for me, but if I, you know, if I do this for a while and numbers start to go up and now there are a hundred of you on here for me to be able to serve that kind of traffic, it, it takes computing resource. It takes, it takes the CPU processing the data and being able to respond to requests. It takes Ram to be able to, you know, queue all those things up and process all these things. And so I'm going to need more server space. The old way says, Hey, if I think I need, you know, I really need to upgrade. I really need to have more powerful systems to serve. Uh, my users, I have to hit up Dell. I have to hit up HP. I have to hit up microsystems, whoever, uh, I got to hit them up and I got to say, cool, let me configure some servers or a server or some servers. It's going to be really expensive, massive upfront costs. I'm going to say, Hey, I have no idea. I have no idea how, what kind of traffic I'm going to get. So I'm going to over provision. I'm going to plan for the future. So I'm going to drop, you know, eight racks. I'm going to drop eight to 10 grand. Give me a really nice server with a massive processor with massive ram hard hard drive space whatever all that stuff cool order it drop you know whip out the credit card pay pay the money it hurts hurts my heart and then uh they, they they take a couple couple days to get it all together maybe a week to get it all together ship it out to me it takes two weeks to get to my location i get it to my house realize hey this is a rack server this is a a flat long server that I'm not ready for. Now I gotta have a rack and I get a rack to put it up in the closet. And then I realized, hey, I, I'm gonna have many more users than I usually have. So I need some bandwidth. So then I gotta, you know, call up Verizon. Or I gotta call up Comcast and say, hey, give me, you know, I need more, I need more bandwidth. I need a bigger pipe run to my house or to my business location. And they say, all right, well, cool. Like you got you gonna have to pay for that. Like we're gonna have to come send some trucks out and really run some, some of that out there. And it's gonna cost you this, this. And then I gotta get the server. I gotta rack it up. I gotta run wires to it. I gotta pop in a, uh, you know, a, a, a CD or a USB. I gotta get Ubuntu installed on it or, or CentOS or something installed on it. Uh, then I gotta get it configured with all of the software, the, the operating system, the software that I need to make sure this, this thing can run. And then we're good to go, okay? Once we do all that, we can, we're, we are we are good to go. But then I still have to maintain this server and this service. And two, a, a couple things happen. One, I don't really know if I have enough server in there. I, I'm not sure, I'm making a guess. If I do have enough server, that means great. Works right now, but I'm still over provisioned when I'm not using the server, I'm wasting my money uh, when it's being used great. And hopefully I have a little bit of headroom. But once we reach the, the capacity of that, I gotta go out and get more servers. I gotta spend all this money up front uh, and it's very time consuming. I cannot, if, if, if for some reason I get stuck uh, you know, I get some kind of big promotion and you know, maybe, maybe somebody super famous shouts out the channel and everyone flocks to it. Uh, if I, if I don't have the capacity to serve the, to serve to everyone, I simply don't have that capacity. That's just how it is. And people will have a bad experience. And so that's the old way. That's how it was, but let's talk about the new way. And let's talk about what the new model of cloud computing does. um what's up get rich uh watching twitch welcome 
I, ho I hope you're not a bot. You probably you sound like a bot to me. I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, wh what's up, software dev? Good to see you as well. Welcome. The new way is self-hosted too with models like Falcon. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So, so self-hosting is not a bot. Excellent. We just, we got, you know, we got a bot. I, I appreciate that you're not a bot. Thank you. I'm sorry for accusing you of being a bot. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Six figure dev. How are you doing today? Welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for the raid. Welcome everyone from six figure devs channel. I hope you all had a great stream today. You just caught us where we're, we're doing a quick introduction to the cloud and to distributed computing and understanding what that is, how we can incorporate that when we are putting together solutions using DevOps and site reliability engineering concepts. So it should be pretty dope. So thanks everyone for coming through. It's good. It's really, really good to see you all. What's up, John Calloway? How are you doing today? All right, so the new way, the new, what, what does what does cloud computing do? How does it change the model that we just spoke about? Well, what it does is uh, cloud computing gives, gives me, gives you, gives everyone at home right now uh, access to the infrastructure that the these cloud providers have. So uh, you are getting access to the, the massive infrastructure that Amazon or Microsoft or Google or Linode or uh, DigitalOcean, you're getting access to the infrastructure they have. So uh, they've already purchased all of those servers. They have data centers. They have literal buildings full of these servers, networked together, set up properly so that you can on demand have access to, to them to do the things that you need to do. So the new way is you put your uh, system, uh, you, you put your applications, uh, you, you go to them and you say, hey, I would really like to rent uh, a server of this size with this, this much compute capacity, CPU, and this much RAM, this much hard disk space, um, and you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm willing to pay for it and I'll, I'll pay for what I use and I will get access to that thing and I will get it instantly. It's on demand. So I asked for it, they give it to me and now I have access and I can do the things that I need to do. If I should need more, I can on demand, uh, you know, pending you set these things up properly. Uh, the setup is on you to make sure these things work, but uh, I can on demand gain access to as much of it as I need. Uh, for the most part, there are, there are limits. Uh, to which you can get by default, but you can kind of, you know, they'll take your money. So you can always get, uh, you can always get your limits increased, but you get, you get access on demand to, to these things. And you say, Hey, I need more compute capacity. I need more Ram. I need more graphics processing and you can have access to that, uh, whenever you want. And so from the comfort of your home, you can scale up. So scale scaling is the, uh, the act of increasing the resources that you have available to serve your applications to meet the demand of the users. All right. And so in a world where any given time you can have, uh, you know, the, the, the tides of the internet, you can get that Reddit hug of death and everyone can flock over to your site and you can have to respond to lots and lots of traffic all at once. Again, the more and more requests you're getting to a system, the more and more resources it is using up to process those requests. And you need to make sure you're able to handle those things. Okay. Uh, not only that, you have access to these individual resources in the cloud. So yeah, right now it sounds like, Hey, we just rented a big server. Yes, you can do that. That's absolutely what you can do, but I can also just rent pieces. I can just rent storage. If I'd like, if my only need is storage, maybe I want to run something locally at my house, but I want to save it up in the cloud. Uh, I can rent just storage space. I can rent just a CPU and Ram. I can rent just processing power as well. I can rent a bunch of different, uh, I, I have a lot of choice in what I can rent. Uh, from them. And so at any given time, I can scale up the demand to meet what I need. There's also a lot of uh, tools and things that are built in to make this a lot easier for you. Okay. Oh, yes, they will definitely take your money for 100%. They'll take your money. The comfort of your home, you too can get $1,500 bill for a static website. Yes, you can. <laughs> you, you can accidentally get a bill for $1,500 for a static website. This is facts. Um, so we're going to dive into, so that, that's a new way. Um, it does, it changes, uh, it, it, it really does change. The reason why it has been so important is because it's changed. It, it's absolutely changed the way that we are able to do anything. I I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not cap. I'm not gassing y'all. When I say you can right now, I could, I could spin up infrastructure right now to serve millions of people by myself. Now, you know, I, would it, would it be 
perfect? Probably not, you know, given enough time it would be, uh, but I could literally serve millions of people. I gotta pay for it. But if I, if I had an application that was really serving that many people, I could set that up myself. I have that kind of power sitting at home. And so it's given companies, it's given all these companies around the world a way to be able to get their stuff out to the users uh, as fast as possible. It makes it really good for rapid prototyping as well. So if you need to just get something going and try something out, uh, you can get it going and try it out with a little, with little risk. You only pay for what you use. So, you know, use it when you need to use it and tear it down when you're not, and you don't have to pay for anything. Uh, there are no commitments for the most part. Uh, so it's really, really nice for what you wanna do. The new way of serverless, I, I'm a big serverless fan. I do agree with you. I have some for you that they are not another recurring cost. Yes, so cost is a big, cost is a big thing. One of the, as you're diving into the cloud, that is absolutely something I want you all to focus on. Um, cost is a, unless, in, yeah, well, Cost is a big thing uh, and managing cost is a big thing. There's a lot of different ways. If you know what you're doing, uh, you can actually manage your costs pretty well. Um, I also wanna be clear, something you might hear a lot about the cloud is that it's cheaper. The cloud is not, I, 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 wanna, I wanna get this in your in your brain right now. The cloud is not necessarily cheap. It is, that is, that is a false statement. Um, yes, the cloud presents less upfront cost, 100%. You don't pay anything upfront. Uh, you pay for what you use as you're using it. But uh, that, it, th that does not mean the cloud is cheaper. Um, at certain levels of scale, over time, if you start to uh, take an effect of time, it may not, that may not be the case. So there are a lot of, uh, and this is generally true with medium to large size organizations who have the ability to, to make those upfront purchases and to have their own systems. Uh, yeah, the maintenance of that is expensive. The upfront cost of that is expensive. The racking those things and paying for the, the data to those things is expensive. Uh, but when you really start to add in the cost over, over time, when you really start to add it in over time and the scale, it may be cheaper for you to run certain workloads uh, on-prem locally, you know, it, it may make more sense. So don't, don't run. I, I don't want you running around to interviews and stuff being like, yeah, every, like one of the reasons why we should move to the cloud is because it's going to save everybody money. <laughs> yes, it, it 100% it can. It absolutely can, especially when you can build your applications in a way that take full advantage of the cloud. This is a very, very important concept that I want you to understand, especially going into, we're talking about software delivery, automation and infrastructure. Uh, you're worried, you are thinking about the applications that are going on here. And the an application can be built uh, in a couple of, in lots of different, an infinite amount of ways. And an application that is built specifically to take advantage of cloud technologies, this is called a cloud native application. There's a little bit of nuance, a little bit of ambiguity around what it means for an application to be cloud native, but a cloud native application uh, really does take advantage of the things that uh, the cloud offers usually a specific service or specific tier of things. Uh, and this can, this, you know, building in this way can save you quite a lot of money. And this is where that, this is where that idea of, of it's gonna save you so much money is a lot of companies have gone and re-architected their applications to take advantage of that. And right up front, it does look like it saves them a lot of money, but it also costs them a lot of engineering money. Like people don't really take into account all the different things, but uh, the cloud doesn't, <laughs> the cloud, what? You'll never stop paying for it for one. <laughs> Uh, and the second thing is, you know, it, it, way less maintenance, way less overhead, but for everyone, it, it doesn't make sense. If, if you were to do some math about how much, like even for storage, even for like, let's say I wanted to, uh, set up some, you know, it, it's cheaper for me to buy really expensive hard drives or set up a home NAS over time than for me to use the cloud for massive file storage. You know, I, I each of these videos every night that I, you know, these streams, they end up being anywhere between six and 14 gigs. And that adds up. We do this six times a week. Uh, and it really does add up for me to save these things in the cloud. It would be, it's a massive cost uh, for me to save these in the cloud and it ain't a, 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 a perpetually reoccurring cost as well. So just, just some good things to keep in mind about the cloud as you're starting your, your journey into the cloud. I've never seen a recurring permanent cloud solution cheaper than renting rack space at a Colo. Colo, Colo is, so again, depends on the size of the workload. That's very interesting. Uh, Colo is not something that people talk about. So uh, because we because we brought, we brought the word up, um, what, what Diginomicon just Sit, just brought up was the the concept of something called co-location. So it's very expensive. Power 
it's very expensive. Uh, the, the data pipe that goes to these systems can be very, very expensive and it can be hard to get what you need. A uh, co-location is the uh, practice of me going to a, a provider that has a data center and saying, hey, I, I have my own systems. I, I purchased my own servers, uh, but I don't have the I don't have the rest of the infrastructure to be able to run these things. Let me please put them in your in your data centers and you you rack them up right in their data centers and you're able to utilize their stuff. So it's a, it's a hybrid model there could be a great option as well. It really could be a great option. Cloud helps you visualize costs ahead of time uh, rather easily. Yeah, that's that's true. Um, you can visualize your costs. You, if you know, as long as you know what you're doing, you can have a great idea of what's going on. Um, you can keep, you can do a lot of things to make sure that you're not surprised and have a good understanding of what you are seeing. Um, maybe it's killing my internet. So, ain't no profit very soon. I'm really hoping. I'm really hoping. I, I applied for a uh, for partner. Uh, maybe like three weeks ago. Hopefully we get it this time. This is my third time applying. Hopefully we can get it this time so I can get permanent transcoding. Uh, yeah, I, I if if they don't, if they if they stop it, or if, if I don't get it, then I will actually start to drop the, tr the stream to 720p. I like to record in 1080p because it's much easier to watch. It looks fine on stream. It's much harder to watch on uh, YouTube. There's a noticeable uh, there's a noticeable difference on YouTube. Uh, and when you're trying to look at text and stuff, it's kind of weird. I think it has to do with the way that YouTube does their compression and it's kind of weird. So um, I'm, I don't know, I might figure it out. There might be some other cool things that I can do to make this, to make it work. Uh, but yeah, all good. Work enterprise apps. So even when the cloud native, it's hard to compete with. Yeah, one time capital cost versus never ending quarterly bills. You're right, you are exactly. This is why, this is why I throw it out there. Depending on your use case, the cloud may not make sense financially, but even when it doesn't make sense financially, it might still be the right way to go for some people because again, of the uh, the flexibility and the, you know, you, 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 you can do so much so quickly. And so, yeah. I just discussed Notion earlier. I wanted to let everyone know in chat that they're, uh, Corporate is looking for infrastructure engineers specifically and a distributed systems at AWS. Long ball, that's amazing. And you know, that means keep an eye on what we're learning tonight. Uh, share, if you have it, oh, you got it right there. Share the link, perfect. That's dope, amazing. Okay, so let's talk about some of the cloud vendors because uh, we talked a lot, we're gonna talk a lot about AWS, uh, but there are more than, just, there's a lot of cloud vendors, a whole lot of cloud vendors, to be honest. Uh, these are the three big players and I just wanted to give you their little, uh, their icons here, their logos, so that you can figure out all this stuff. So the one on the left is Microsoft Azure or Azure or Azure, Azure. I don't know what it is, what it really is, but it's Microsoft Azure. This is Microsoft's cloud. Uh, you know, the second, this is the second big player in the game. Uh, it holds the second amount of market share, Azure. Uh, we got AWS, Amazon Web Services. This is Amazon's uh, cloud. And this is the, by, by substantial margin, the largest cloud provider or it has the has the biggest market share. Um, yeah, so AWS. And the one on the bottom is Google uh, GCP, Google Cloud Platform. Also a good cloud. This is in the third place by by a, a pretty fair margin. It's, it's deep into third place. Uh, there are a number of reasons for why it's in third place. Uh, they were latest to the game out of the big out of the big three. Uh, there's they're also they, they, they made a focus on uh, their focus is really on data and machine learning, and they invested a lot in those things, um, which is which ultimately I think is going to pay off for them. Uh, and anything is paying off for them, but they still have uh, what is touted as probably the most developer friendly cloud. Debatable, uh, one hundred percent debatable, but you know maybe may good. I've I've done a few things in there. Works, does what you need it to do, um, and so you know for certain things that may be where you want to go people are hiring for all of these things these are just some of them there are other cloud providers uh so other large cloud providers ibm has a cloud um i've never seen anyone hiring for it to be honest i've never used it there's also oracle has a cloud everybody has a cloud nowadays you can check it out you can uh, get access to things i would not advise that you hop into any of these clouds. Like right now, if you're trying to learn, there there are there are two ways I would go with this. Uh, I, so there's for 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 work. I'm not I'm not advertising for work. I'm just I just want people to be aware that they that they they do exist. Uh, so here's my recommendations for diving into the cloud. One of the one of the big three, 
definitely pick one of the big three. These are the clouds that people are hiring for. This is where the mass market is hiring for. Pay attention to one of the big three. I also think for, uh, as you're learning some other uh, things, as you're, as you're diving into building more and more products, uh, these may be tough to make sense for smaller day-to-day -day things. So I use I use those for some things. I have, I have a bunch of active things in AWS right now, but I also have things in both uh, Linode. And so these are what people consider, uh, th these are cloud providers, DigitalOcean, that's not DigitalOcean. And the reason why I'm telling you about these other uh, smaller clouds is because their products are more uh, helpful uh, for for you to do, to, to do things quickly. You're not always trying to build a product for a lot of people to get access to. You are trying to you know learn how to do stuff. You want access to a network system so that you can get compute capacity or so that you can get some storage or something like that. Check these check these out. I 100% think you should be aware of these things again i think it'll save you a little bit of money as well uh you know there's not there's not quite as big of a learning curve yes aws and azure and all this stuff they do a bunch of stuff that's great but you generally have to know a lot more uh there's, there's, a, there's a much larger learning curve to know how to use them effectively and it's not always a thing to do when you're uh when you're when you're working on your own, own thing exactly for individuals digital ocean is great for individuals 100 percent ag uh, agree jrt a uh, grt so is linode Linode is a channel, channel sponsor. They also will give you hundred credits if you check the panel below. Feel free to check out whatever works, uh, but definitely for trying to get into DevOps, SRE, uh, systems engineering, cloud engineering, you need to dive into one of the big three. AWS has the by far the biggest market share. So we'll go down to this next slide. AWS, this is an old slide too, but AWS, biggest market share by a lot. Um, so there are more jobs for AWS. There, 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 there are more roles out there in the world for AWS, but it also means you have more competition. Uh, let me be clear. There are enough jobs for all of us. There absolutely are enough jobs for all of us. Everybody, everybody is, is, is doing something in the cloud. They may not be fully move, moving to the cloud, uh, but everybody is doing something in the cloud. It needs people who understand this to help do the things that they need to do. Uh, but you know, Amazon, most jobs, but also the most people who know Amazon as well, Azure, you can make a ton of money in the Azure space. So this is what I find. This is what I find. Uh, there are many more approachable roles for AWS. I find that the Azure roles I come across are they're looking because there aren't as many Azure developers because the Azure market share is smaller. Uh, they're generally looking for somebody to take on and do the whole thing. Or, or much, or like a lot, like take on a bigger role, um, and I find that these roles are a little, uh, a little more senior. And but they, you, I think you can. I, I personally, in the United States at least, you, I think you can make more uh, doing Azure, um, to be honest. But I think it'll be harder to get a role. There's just gonna be less people, uh, less companies looking for it. And then Google Cloud. I think I think you can probably make the most doing Google Cloud because this has this, the lowest market share and it's much harder for companies to find uh, people who are really proficient in Google Cloud, becoming pretty proficient in Google Cloud. Companies, in my experience, again, this is my experience, are generally willing to pay more for that, to find that person who's good at Google Cloud. That's, that's your options. Biggest market share means the most people are in it. You have the most competition uh, so that the, you know, the, 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 the pay is generally a little bit lower. It's kind of like development, you know, JavaScript, everybody wants JavaScript developers and generally, you know, it might be easier to get a job doing JavaScript, uh, but generally the, 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 the pay is going to be a little bit lower than if you have someone who's doing a specific kind of more uh, niche language like go or Scala or something like that. Um, so yeah. Let's see. Azure is more uh, for business teams in my experience. So interesting. I, yeah. So yes, I think that is what it is, is, is kind of happens. But I think the Azure cloud is, oh, I think it's on par. I think it's, I think it, 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 it doesn't have to be. I think it's just that way because that's how people look at Microsoft in general. So the people who decide to go with them uh, are more enterprise clients. Um, but I think that, that for, for a lot of things, they all, all three, all three clouds have the things that you need to be able to solve those problems. Uh, no big deal. This full spec developer, are they expected to do DevOps to Uber King Kong? This is a great question. Is that what you mean by Azure doing everything? So 
That is a phenomenal question. Uh, and this is something that we're, I'm absolutely gonna make a video on about what about what full stack means and what the, what the new full stack is. And no, I generally, and this is not this is not true of every place. I'm sure there are plenty of you out there who say, hey, I'm a full stack developer and I touch all these things. Full stack development uh, generally is, is not, doesn't need to know DevOps things. Generally, full stack developers just simply need to know uh, the both the server side and the, the client side of their application, not necessarily to know how the server runs or how it's set up or how uh, the, the architecture in which the, the application is gonna be run later on. Uh, generally, that, that's not necessary. Um, I, I think that the word full stack is evolving and I think that it is expected now that you know more and more and more. Um, I think a lot of full stack developers are now you know, have a good understanding of, of containers and stuff now. But, um, yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, I, they might have some, some, you know, understanding, Hey, you know, I know that when I push this code, I, I understand that it goes through this CI pipeline and I understand what that means. I might not necessarily understand what's really happening or, or the steps or how to implement this thing, but I understand it's going through this thing and it's going to get automatically deployed. Maybe something like that, but, uh, generally, you know, a, a very light knowledge, maybe. All right, web development. I agree, Sin City. I think web development. So over, I think it's oversaturated. Yeah, I mean that's why the yeah. I think it's oversaturated in in comparison to other technical topics. I do not think it is an oversaturated, completely oversaturated field. I think that there are tons. I, I still think there's way more jobs than there are people, um, but it's just much easier to find web developers. Um, extremely competitive, especially for companies with existing Microsoft stacks. One to two hundred percent. 200%. Which cloud had the best documentation? That's a good question. I, I don't know. I've had the, I have the most experience with AWS. I've, uh, I've been AWS, I've been multiple times AWS certified. I've built a, a bunch of things in AWS. Um, the documentation is okay. Um, for something at this scale, I don't know how great your documentation can be. Uh, I've seen some Azure stuff. I'm really impressed with Microsoft's other products documentation. So that to me, that's a plus but we'll see. We'll see if that makes any sense. I don't know. I don't know if that'll uh, uh, pass along uh, this year. I'm going to be diving pretty heavily into Azure uh, to kind of pick up another cloud and to kind of get, you know, smart. We're moving eight data, data centers in Azure. It's almost 100% Linux, 100%, 100%. If if you are building social media companies with AWS, you are doing everything wrong. You know, I, I mean, you could be depending on what you're doing. I, I, I think that I think that you would be surprised at how similar um, all of the terms of services might be between the companies. And I think, yeah, I think, I think that people are, are, I think people are skewed at, I think people have a fundamental misunderstanding of what these companies uh, have to allow you to do or what their responsibility to you is personally. But yeah, I mean, sure. I've heard really good things about learn that Microsoft.com for sure. All right. So those are the vendors you can see here. There's a bunch of other ones. Alibaba has a big cloud as well. Salesforce, you know, there's, there's a, there's a bunch of them down here and this is, a, this is old from 2019, but yeah. Um, so, uh, that's what to say. What the heck is distributed systems? I'll fix that. So. Whoa. Um, we, we, we started this stream by saying that distributed systems or, or that the cloud was uh, distributed networked computing resources. And so now to, to really kind of understand how it works, we need to understand what distributed systems are and kind of how these things work. We're going to touch very lightly on this because the, for, for what we're trying to learn it throughout the entirety of this, uh, this, these eight weeks, uh, you just, this is just the icing on the, t the cake to help you kind of understand what it is, but we don't really need to dive too deep into this. Bit of advanced stream, but yeah, something to think about a centralization of power within the industry. hundred percent. I, 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 I have lots of feelings about centralization of power within the industry. Yeah. I use AWS when it requires OC. That's fair. As you're having PowerShell and Bash shell built in is amazing. I didn't check that out. I, I also need to dive a little deeper into, uh, so I'm a new, 
for all of you who are new to the channel, first off, let me give the get some of the followers out of the way. Shifty, shifty, welcome. Uh, Double, how are you doing? Welcome to the channel. Ruffers, good to have you. Shalix, welcome. GRT, thank you so much for the follow. Uh, Elderot, good to see you. Uh, Post, Post Clarity, welcome to the channel. Uh, Mystify, welcome. Chow down, love it, welcome. Uh, my Bior, good to see you as well. Good to have you all. Welcome. Come on in. So for anyone new to the channel, I, I've traditionally been a Linux person. This is the every time I've run every boot camp that we've run in the past, I've run off of Linux. Uh for a long time I was a Linux only user. But the the what what Microsoft has done in the past maybe three years uh has been nothing short of impressive, especially for a company of that size that has already built up such a reputation. Uh, I think it's impressive to watch their pivot uh, and watch how they're able to, like, how they're slowly but surely, I think, uh, getting out of removing a lot of the stigma that exists within them. Sure, there's still a lot of it out there, uh, but removing some of that stigma. Something I never messed with very much was PowerShell because I felt, you know, it, I, I was a, I was a, I was a hell no Microsoft guy. Like I was, I really, you know, that wasn't my thing. Um, I went back to it for a number of reasons. The biggest of which is I got into PC gaming, which was both the best thing and worst thing that happened to me. Uh, and so I, I kind of, you know, went back to the Windows side and that's when they started doing uh, the things that they started doing. And I'm really impressed by what they're doing. And when you are, uh, be because, because I like what they're doing, uh, I like to vote with my wallet and because actually to me, Windows is now the, the, for me, for my use case, I'm not saying it is my favorite operating system, but it's the best operating system for me. Why? Because I play games. I play AAA games. <laughs> so I play games. I do content creation. This is a big one and I code. So, you know, Mac will give me good coding, good content creation, bad gaming. Linux will give me great uh, coding, uh, uh, okay gaming, and pretty trash content creation. Windows gives me access to all three of those things, and that is that is why I choose it right now. Uh, but I do want to dive into some PowerShell stuff. I do want to give. I, I like. I'm really excited about diving into more of what Microsoft has to offer. Um, I've heard really good things about PowerShell. I definitely want to dive into it a little bit more. WSL is insane. It's phenomenal. Uh, this, so I'm at like what you guys are looking at right now. This is a, uh, this is a, it's a surface. I'm literally doing all this on a surface. Uh, I have access to a pen. This is great. I have access to windows terminal with that. This is, this is just all like windows is it's become really good. Is it the best looking operating system? No, it is not. <laughs> it is definitely not the best looking at all, but WSL two is phenomenal. I man, I can't complain at all. All right. So distributed systems, let's talk about those. What is it? A distributed system uh, in its most simplest definition is a group of computers working together as to appear as a single computer to the end user. That's all I want you to know. That's I'm not joking for now for, for what this course is. That's all I want you to know right now. We're going to talk about the rest of the stuff, but like if you can get that concept under your belt, that's it. It's a, it's a, it's a group of network computers. All right. There's computers all over the place that are responsible for different things. We're going to see this live. We're going to set up a distributed application in a second in the cloud, but it's a, you know, different things are happening in different computers. They're speaking to each other, but as far as you, as you're concerned, as far as the end user is concerned, uh, it is one system and the experience gives you one, uh, one experience. These machines have a shared state, they operate concurrently, and they can fail independently without affecting the whole system's uptime. This is this is this is what's so great about it. So pieces of the system can go down without bringing the entire thing down. Sure, might cause some issues. Sure, uh, you know maybe maybe some oddities in there, but it's possible when you are working out of this model uh, for things to go down and uh, things can fail independently without affecting the entire system. Um, why would you want to use the distributed system? So fault tolerance is a big one. Fault tolerance. So it, what fault tolerance is, is your application's ability to have an error for, for a fault to occur and for your application to be able to tolerate that thing and continue uh, operating in a certain way. Uh, scalability, your system's ability to be able to increase its resources, to be able to meet the demands of 
of the people accessing it or, or, or the load that is put upon the system and performance distributed systems can it's, it can this is this this is a both an advantage and a disadvantage uh but performance as well uh is is another thing that might be good about them porn lord welcome to the channel jb's welcome to the channel as well uh, except every windows 10 update breaks my computer and i have to roll back sin city you you are you're not wrong about the windows updates uh big problem in windows I, I have another computer that's on the insider's edition. Like I try to help them out with that, some of that stuff. I understand why Windows updates are so difficult to do. I still think they have more than enough money and resources to fix that issue. And I don't understand. I don't understand how they haven't fixed it yet. Um, to be honest, it is a gigantic problem that they need to work on. Have you done any contract work? Yes, I have done contract work, Vic the Slick. Uh, yeah, I have. Um, how do I price myself? It depends on, it depends on what it is. Um, and it also depended on where I was when I did it. I've done, I've done an AWS project. I've done a couple of AWS projects, contract work. Um, I had one where I had about two weeks worth of work to do. It could have, I could have easily priced it out to a month. Um, and you know, I, so I always, because the contract work wasn't my main job, I was okay with not getting the contract. And so I, I generally went pretty high. Like, I think I went on the first, the, that first contract. I think I quoted that person. Like, I, th I think I quoted, um, like about 85 hours for the whole thing. And I think I, and then I, I think I quoted them like 300, 350 bucks or something like 330 bucks. No one, we were going to negotiate a bit. I think we ultimately settled on like two something like 260 bucks. Uh, but for AWS, at least I had the credentials to back it up. Um, and so, you know, I'm sure people will get more than that all the time, but this was like a, you know, this wasn't an enterprise or anything like that. Um, I've done a couple of smaller things where it's been a, a, a flat, a flat fee for, for, uh, you know, setting up fairly basic things. People will pay you a good amount of money to set up, um, set up some, uh, I, I work with a company. I did a, I did a project for a company who was looking to take all of their doc, they had tons of documents and they were sc scanning them into a machine, realized that they were gonna have problems with the systems they had internally, wanted to move it to the cloud and get some lifecycle policy set up to make sure they could save the most amount of money and stuff. And this was like a, this, uh, this was like a 10 hour, it was like a 10 hour job. And they just gave me a flat fee of like, I think they gave me like a thousand bucks or something uh, for that. But you know, you, I mean, I don't know. I'm not good. I'm, I don't have any hard, fast rules for pricing yourself, but uh, there's, a, there's certainly money to be made on the contracting space. I just personally, you know, I might start doing it a little bit. Uh, to, uh, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna do it. Uh, to be honest, I just, I, that, that life uh, going out and try to fight for contracts and like find the work is a little bit stressful. You know, even though I'm running my own business, I, I there's a, I also don't like to have customers. I don't also don't like to have like technical customers, uh, people who want support for long-term. Like I don't want people calling me to come fix this little thing and it's not even broken. They just didn't know what they were doing, but yeah. Um, okay. Let's keep going. Let's welcome caught you on the front page. Ah, front page. That sounds exciting. Uh, yeah. Th so that's what I was telling you all about the, that we would probably have some bots in here and why I need to set up some stuff, uh, around it is because, uh, Twitch, Twitch reached out to me and they're doing, they're doing some, uh, highlights for black creators on Twitch. And they were like, Hey, you might be on the front page. You might not. And I was like, cool. I appreciate that. That sounds great. So anyone new to the channel, welcome. This is Mastermind Academy, we learn all things digital delivery, uh, software engineering, uh, computer science, DevOps, SRE work, cloud computing, all the other stuff that that leads in there. We run boot camps. So if you go to academy.mastermind.io, uh, we we run eight week boot camps. This is the apprentice level of all these boot camps, and so this is the beginner series. They're, they last eight weeks. After these eight weeks are done, we'll we'll take a month off of boot camps. Um, we'll run something called excursions, which are shorter, uh, courses on more direct topics and more direct concepts, uh, things like Git, things like Docker, Linux, uh, and they're, and they're shorter, they're two to three weeks. And then we'll hop back in with the intermediate level of these courses. So we'll, we'll jump up in difficulty. We'll jump up in the scope of what we're learning. And then we will ultimately do the same thing and jump into master's levels of these courses as well. So there you go. There, there you go. Uh, no, I, I appreciate the top streamers. I appreciate it. Enjoying your boot camps through YouTube, super informative, but I have a hard time putting the knowledge to use. Uh, that, so intangible experience, any tips? Anwar, one, I hear you. I 100% hear you. So 
that's what we are attempting to make the the journeyman level courses of of this are designed to the apprentice level courses are designed to get you introduced to the concepts get you introduced to the topics and allow you to kind of uh begin to get some understanding the intermediate level courses the journeyman level courses are designed to get you uh t real tangible experience uh and to and to help you contextualize what's happening so that we've only run two we've only run two of them before and i ran those when i was still working full time and so i wasn't able to build those in the way that i wanted to build them uh this time around this is gonna be a little different the way that we kind of did it was uh for pipelines for this course we we lo we live action role plays and so we the, the the goal was to try to set up a scenario where we are walking into a company day one you are you've just been hired and you have reference infrastructure and you have tangible tasks that you are trying to complete uh and that you're a place you're trying to take this company that is what the the next two the the both the journeyman and the master level of pipelines will be exactly that um Besides that, I, I do find that it's difficult. Everyone says to do, you know, grab a project that's, you know, that means something to you and that's a problem you want to solve. Again, I, I understand that that's a hard thing to do. I don't think that always makes a lot of sense. Um, it, I do think it is difficult to do projects specifically around infrastructure to help you really understand what's happening. You can understand how to use the tools, but it's not always clear why you're doing what you're doing. Um, you, you know, you can learn how to do the what's, but you don't really learn the why's through that. Um, I don't have any, I don't have any great tips for it now, uh, but that is something that I'm working on having some tips for and having a way for people to be able to understand uh, that and put some context around that. Um, I think, I think for programming, it's a little bit, it's a little bit different. I think there's more tangible things you can do out of the box. I agree. Well, I've started to say yourself is a good way to start, uh, for sure. Digital Thank you so much for the Twitch sub. Thank you. Tier two. I appreciate that. That's love right there. Three months. I appreciate it. Uh, well, the journeyman and master's level run right after apprentice. So yeah, lead DevOps. it'll, it'll be a month in between, but there will still be stuff. And so. The way that it's going to work is there's actually going to be another apprentice starting apprentice course starting the next run uh and then all the courses will jump up to intermediate and then the last time we run we run them uh there will be two intermediate uh, there'll be basically one at intermediate one at a beginner and two to three at master level at that time and then so we'll, we'll end up getting on a new rotation to where at any given time there's uh there's an entry level course an intermediate course and an advanced course going on at any given time uh, i will not be the only instructor at this at that time though just so you know um i'm gonna i'm gonna stick to devops uh, infrastructure things uh, pipelines will be mine uh, probably always and maybe the cloud computing and we're going to ask some, some more stuff but someone who's way better at software uh is going to be joining uh hopefully going to be joining us uh to do more software stuff someone who's a, a monster at software pretty dope so we're trying to work on that a little bit just to make sure that we have want to be able to offer more just want to simply want to be able to offer more uh to, to everybody and make sure that you know it's all good Live action sounds interesting. I'll be on the lookout for those. 100%. More, a whole lot of information is coming out real, real soon. Also, people who are new here, uh, we are going to be, uh, we're partnering with companies and stuff to help get you all jobs and be able to like, to be able to allow you all to speak directly to hiring manager, like to get you seriously interface with companies so that you can start building relationships with companies. Even if you're just starting out, uh, like, being able to speak to a hiring manager or or an engineer and make a connection with with these many many companies out here to kind of start the process of them knowing where you are and to know you know to, to figure out who who you are and to keep an eye on you and you can start to foster that relationship we're also going to put stuff in place to help you foster those relationships so that they know about you companies need all of you like i'm not joking companies really need all of you and so we're putting in place some some ways for that to happen uh to make sure you all can get work like people can get work any given like that's the goal. Like we're not learning this stuff for, yeah, it's fun. But we're not learning it for fun. We're learning it so that we can work so that we can make money. So, you know, it, it, that we, yes, I, I, this is, this is not, I'm not, you, everyone's like, yeah, you need to be passionate. Yeah. Passion helps 100% passion helps. The more passionate you can, the more passion you can find in this, the, the more motivated you'll be, the better you'll probably ultimately be, but money it's okay. If, it's okay for money to be that motivator. It's okay with success to be that motivator. It's okay with, uh, you know, the, the doors that being able to touch these companies opens up. It's okay. All of it, uh, whatever it is, it is, it's fine. Whatever your, whatever your goal is, that's, that's fine. 
You want us to change the world for the better. The money is the tool to do so. Yeah. Uh, yes. That is, that's, that is, that is exactly how I feel about, uh, tech. I love tech. I know that tech can change the world. Uh, and I know that tech can help provide the income needed to be able to do things that I think I can do to be able to contribute to the world. And I, I hundred percent, uh, agree with that. Could you expect students to be able to get certs after your journey courses? GRT Tomps. Yes. Uh, or GR Tomps. Uh, so this, um, it depends. The only course that I would say that you would be prepared for an actual certification for after, because it's designed around certifications is the horizons course that runs on Fridays. It's a journey into cloud computing with AWS specifically. Uh, the, the very first one is designed to you. You will be able to get, I, I do think you'll be able to get the, um, the certified cloud practitioner after taking the level one course, the, le the, the level one course also goes into solutions architect associate as well. So it's, a, it's, you know, it's more than just the basics. It goes a little farther than that. Um, I, do, I think that you will be, you'll also be after the associate, I mean, after the journeyman level of, of, of horizons, I think you will be level uh, ready for, uh, probably all three, if not all three, two, to, at least two of the three associate level AWS courses. Um, and some of the, some of the excursions that we're going to start are going to be designed around some certifications. Like the Terraform one is going to change up so that it is uh, specifically for, uh, the, uh, Terraform cert now that they have one and a few other things, but, uh, it'll, it'll definitely put you on the right path. But the, the most of the stuff here is more practical uh, pipelines, especially is more practical than it is, uh, for you to be able to pass a certification. All right, so here we go. So all you need to know again, this first line of distributed computing, uh, you know, multiple systems designed to uh, work together to appear as one. And these are some of the reasons why you might want to use it. Um, here's some of the difficulties. So, you know, you get something and everyone says, hey, it provides all this upside. There's nothing but benefits here. There's always uh, cons to that situation. Everything that you do, everything that you choose, there's all, it's always a trade-off. It's, it's, there's never, uh, there's, there's never really a right answer. There are only trade-offs. That's all you're comparing is, Hey, what are the trade-offs here? And these are some things that you have to deal with when you do decide to go to the distributed computing model network failure, network failure is a big one. When you have uh, a system, when you have an application that's designed to work together, it's distributed, it's designed to work together to provide a singular experience. If there are network issues, the only way these systems know how to connect is over a network. So that can be pretty problematic. Latency. This is where, this is why I wanted to put a little asterisk beside, um, beside performance. So while performance can be faster, um, latency can be bad. Latency is the amount of time it takes for data to get uh, from one point to another. Um, and so because these things are distributed, let's say you have part of your application running in Northern Virginia, and then part of your application running in Houston, Texas, uh, and for those things to work together, they got to send data across the country basically. And it moves really fast. Uh, but that latency can be a problem. The amount of time it takes for that data to get to the other system can cause, uh, can cause some, some slowness or latency in your application. Observability. We just learned about observability. We just learned that observability is the, uh, is, is, is the paradigm in which you can be able to view what's going on with a system, uh, internally to a system from the outside and get enough information to be able to know what's going on and be able to make some decisions about that thing. Observability is tough to do when you have systems all over the place doing different things. When you have a bunch of systems working together as one, but they're separate, uh, it can be really hard to put together something that, uh, that gives you the right information that you need to determine what's going on. That's another tough thing. And then the management and overhead of it can be tough as well. Looking around and, ma and making sure, you know, things are running, understanding where issues are happening at, uh, make, you know, having to upgrade this thing over here and this thing over here. And you know, I got all these different tools. This can be tough as well. And so we got more, we have, we have more cons over here than on the pro side of things, but these pros are so large. <laughs> they're so big that, you know, it might work. Uh, it might work for you. Uh, it, you know, it, it, it might work for you. This is why people love the cloud. This is why people are using it uh, for just about everything. To be honest, what's up music box. How are you doing today? Going Craigslist jobs, always companies posting. I agree. Craigslist jobs is one of the most overlooked places to get roles. 
the thing on my resume, knowing someone to vouch for me at a place I'm applying for has been far more, far, far more helpful. I, yes. Having someone who can vouch for you is incredibly, it, it, it's the ultimate hack. It, it's, it's absolutely the ultimate hack. That is why I always say, hey, don't do, when you're learning, when you're learning anything, I, I don't think you should, unless you're just, again, if you're really good autodidact, if you're good at learning on your own, great, do what you gotta do. But when you are diving into this stuff, uh, hopping into some kind of community where you can start to interface with people, you never know who you're gonna meet. You never know who'd be willing to vouch for you and to help put you on somewhere uh, word of mouth is, uh, is the best way to do just about anything in this world, to be honest with you. Since it's pays 100%, remember the hardest time, this is the hardest time uh, to get jobs in the past 25 years. Yeah. Persistence is key. Also, yes, persistence is very key. Uh, once you get, once you do enough where you're, where you're comfortable, where you become comfortable with, with, with the no's or the failures, uh, it actually becomes pretty easy. The best way to, to do this. The hardest job to get is the first one. When you get that first job, when the best thing to do is to interview when you are comfortable. Interview when you do not need a job. And this is what will be the, I think the biggest trade off for you. Uh, it'll give you the biggest payoff and being comfortable in interviews and being able to properly show what you know, uh, when it'll be much less pressure. And it's a, it's just a, it's a good practice to have. Interviewing is, it, it is, it is part of, because it's so stressful, it's part of the process that people ignore the most. And, uh, you know, I really think that, uh, people should do that. Who is hurting right now. So if you're hurting, so are we facts, um, it's mostly not what you know, but who, you know, uh, facts, it's networking and learning who, you know, is incredible. Yes. Yes. What, you know, what, you know, don't get, don't get, don't get us wrong though. What you know can get you a job, but who you know, who you know is, I, I can't tell you how many times I, I, like, I've been called like people I used to work with or just people I know and just like, Hey, uh, you know, we got a, we got a new greenfield project. You know, you want to come over and do it. Yeah, I do. I would, would it, you know, what, what's, what's that pay looking like? I think I do want to come over there and do that thing, uh, for sure. Um, Yes, exactly. 100% Beverly. Like, yes, that is the, like the, who, you know, the, who you like that. That's really what we're trying to create this. Um, like we're trying to put like, we're trying to put you like, I, like this is not like a, Oh, here's a referral. Here's someone who might be interested in your company. It was like, look, <laughs> these people are literally right here at your call. You can literally hop in to a discord chat and have direct conversation or a phone call or whatever. Like they're in here, they're in here participating with you all, like getting to know you all to see you here. Like I, I, I'm telling you with, when, when hiring managers, and engineering managers stuff, see the same names over and over again, night after night, they come through and they see like, like that they build a connection. People are people, people love people they can connect with. Uh, people like, like contrary to popular be belief, people actually love to help other people. They really do. Uh, I know the world is crazy, but when you're actually talking to people, when you're not looking on the TV and when you're not looking on the news and you're actually talking with people and working with people, uh, people really do enjoy helping other people. And, uh, you know, the, the more and more uh, time you can get with direct access, the, the better it is for everyone. I think. All right, we got it. We got to keep moving. My bad. We keep, we keep getting farther and farther. This part's not super important for now. I wanted you to have it as a part of the slides, but there are different types of distributed systems. We are going to talk about, um, we're going to be hopping into one of these client server. Uh, the client in this case is the, the, the system that is making the request. Usually this is your load balancer and the server is a system that's responding to that request. Uh, we have three tier, which there might be a middle piece in the way, um, that handles the, the, the connection between the server side of things and the client. And so when a client makes a request, it hits this middle tier and more things happen on the back end. uh, in tier just means there might be more tiers in between where things kind of bounce around. We'll draw some pictures real quick and peer to peer means there's nothing in between resources just talk directly back and forth to each other. These are not super important right now, uh, but will be later on as we dive into more and more things. But I did get a standing desk. I did get a standing desk. I have the not autonomous. Who are the other people? It's autonomous. And then there's another company that's not autonomous that goes head to head with autonomous uplift. Thank you. You got it. Uh, yes, I got the uplift V2. 
I love it. I love this standing desk a lot. I prefer to teach standing 100%. Like I, I really do prefer to teach standing. I, my chair is cool, but now nah, I much prefer to, uh, to teach standing up. You know, let's, let's be a little more animated. If you see me like falling over and stuff, or if I get real short for a second, my desk is kind of high, but I'm on a balance board. They give you like some free stuff. If I do not use this balance board, my back will hurt. Uh, my back will hurt. So like I have a little balance board and like, I like it. I, I really do. I'm really enjoying it. Um, I, I want to order one for my office, but I don't want to spend the money, especially cause I say we're about to have a little one. Uh, so I'm probably gonna be home for a little while, uh, which, you know, gift and a curse uh, for being home. Not, not the little one on the way. I just, I'm, I'm not super productive here. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I, I, it sucks because my most powerful computer is here for editing and all that stuff. I'm not that productive in the house. I, do, I much prefer to go to my office, but I'll figure it out. I'll definitely figure it out pretty soon. All right, so distributed computing, it looks like this. Very, very, very simply, uh, what it might what it might look like is this. We may have a system in the cloud. You know, let's just let's put a little let's put a little cloud here. Let's put a little distributed system. And we might say, cool, we have an application. And maybe we will set this up right now. Uh, I was trying to figure out what we're gonna do with this. We might just do it really quick because of the amount of time with WordPress. Um just because that's the thing that you all know about, and it's the quickest like get done thing. And so WordPress, WordPress is uh, a, it's, it's, it runs the internet. If you don't know what WordPress is, WordPress is a content management system that runs the internet. And normally it, it's, it runs on a lamp stack, which is Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. All right, so Linux is the operating system. Apache is the web server. MySQL is the database. PHP is in fact the it's, the, it's the language, it's the runtime. It's the language framework that is running this thing. It's the language. Um, this is the, this is the tech stack. You hear people talk about tech stacks all the time. We are going to do a whole day on tech stacks and kind of understanding what tech stacks are. Uh, I'm a fan of Nginx, but for, for, for WordPress, um, this is the, the stack for it. Uh, I, the reason why they don't, they generally don't use a limp stack. So, so you can have a limp stack, LEMP stack, which has Nginx instead of Apache, but Apache is a better web server for dynamic content, uh, serving dynamic things like WordPress uh, sites and Nginx, the way that it works, those workers are better for serving static content, but it, there are ways to get that thing to work um, faster. Again, it depends on what you're doing, which one is faster. So. The way that this is set up is uh, a distributed system for this might look like this. And this is this is not a great application to show this, but it, it's, it's one of the simplest ones to show up for. So normally you'd have a big system. Whoops. Whoa. Normally you'd have a you'd have a big server like this. And the whole lamp stack would get installed right here. So you'd install Linux on it. Uh, it's all Apache, MySQL and PHP and everything would be served from here. So this is you sitting at your house and you are on your laptop and you want the website. And when you get, when you want to go to it, it simply goes here. This processes your stuff and then it sends it on back to your laptop. That is normally how a non-distributed uh, system would work. A, this is one service. There's one server, uh, giving you the experience that you want. All right. But. A distributed system works a little differently. And because of the cloud, it works a little differently as well. So uh, the way that this would work is, sure, we might have a server that is that is running a certain amount of things. We might have one that's running. You know, it might, it might be running, it might have Linux on it. And it might be responsible for the web server uh, aspect of this. And because it has the web server on it, it's also probably running the runtime. So it's got Linux, Apache, and it's got PHP. We could actually move uh, Apache off, but it's a little bit interesting. Um, but MySQL is the database. This is where the data store is. We might have another server separate from this one. And this actually, nope, let's undo that. Let's actually draw a database. You know, this, this is how they usually show it. All right, and this is gonna be MySQL. And this is where you have your first <laughs> This is your first distributed computing model. And so what happens is you are sitting at home. 
and you're on your, you're on your laptop again, you're going to make your request out. It's going to get served through here. The web server is going to going to do that. PHP is going to process it and, you know, run what it needs to run. Uh, and then it's going to, but it needs some data to populate the page. So then that's going to grab some data from MySQL, get passed back and then back to your computer ultimately. And these two pieces here, this database here and the rest of the system, uh, they are, they are separate. They're completely separate from each other, running in different services, uh, different, uh, completely different locations and they're connected to each other over a network. Uh, but to you, it's going to feel, it's going to feel very, it's, it's, it's not going to seem any different from to you. If you went to a WordPress site right now that was running on a, a single system and one that was running in a distributed manner like this, uh, you probably would not know the difference. Now this is a simple, this is a pretty simple distributed model. Okay. Let me show you one, a little, uh, I want to contextualize this for you. You're learning about, you're learning about software delivery, infrastructure, automation. You're learning about how all this stuff works. So I used to work. The last project that I worked on, I was a lead at the uh, U.S. Small Business Administration. And I'll give you a little information because these are some things that you can find. This is actually a uh, public repository, uh, at least for the front end of this website. But uh, the the just a, a little bit of what I can show you. I can't show you everything, but to show you how. Uh, a distributed system might work. Yeah, PPP loans, 100%. Uh, how a bigger system might work is you might have something like this. You might have, uh, you might have, let's say, an API, a giant API layer. And you might have uh, in behind that API or, or even in front of that API, you might have another piece of computer that, uh, you know, maybe uses your CDN. And uh, maybe you have, you know, maybe you have you over here requesting some data and it goes through here and maybe it goes back and forth between here. And then this thing over here can go over here to maybe, you know, an application that's sitting in a bucket and that, that, that application can go ahead and it can process. But what it also does at the same time is it makes a request back through here that goes ahead over here and get some data from this data store, this database. And that information gets transferred back and then back here to do some processing. And then ultimately that gets, this gets sent to over to maybe a, uh, a Lambda and what, what, what should we draw for a Lambda? I, I never, uh, that I don't know how to draw the half-life symbol. We'll just draw Lambda. I don't know, a little function over here, but a new, a new little thing here that transfers data back. And then ultimately it comes back to the user's computer. Wild. This is not how that really works, but this is what systems in the cloud begin to look like. Okay. All of these, all of these, uh, nodes, all these different things right here. These are all different services in the cloud. They're all different pieces of the cloud. And we'll learn tonight that Amazon has almost 200 services that they offer you and that you can, you can use these services and you can put them together like Legos to build a solution. That's what this is right here. You know, we, we grabbed a bunch of their services, a bunch of their tools, and we started to connect them together like Legos. And ultimately they provide a singular experience to the user. Terrible picture. We are going to dive deeper in, into stuff like this. This is the stuff that I really love. Um, to be honest, I, I love, I love this stuff so much. Um, and we'll dive more and more into that, but we're gonna set up really quick. We'll just set up a distributed MySQL really fast because we can do it in the amount of time that we have left. Uh, we do have a lot of similarity with AWS Lambda for my current project. Dope. What's the difference between a business layer and a data layer? Or same thing. No, it, so that 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 is however your company, dis, however you decide to architect it, it could be the exact same thing. A lot of times, uh, usually I wouldn't call it a data layer, but um, you know, the business layer usually is the one interacting with the, with the data. Um, so yeah, so we have some stuff, the, the way that that worked, uh, was a little bit, a little bit interesting. Um, I, again, I, I want to reach out to the, the, the government person who led the project the whole time, the product owner who was, uh, to find out how I, I really want to do a dive into this. Uh, and I want to know if I, I actually really want to see if he wants to come and give a dive into what we did over the course of three years and what we can share. I don't know what can be shared, uh, but that's, thank you. I'm glad we brought that up. I'm gonna reach out to him. I'm gonna put this on my note right now to reach out to him right after this, actually. Let me, let me tell my phone to do it so I don't remember. Remind me in one hour to reach out to Ryan. 
cool yeah i because i just don't know how much of it i can share um and i'd love for him to uh to, to hop on he's super in, incredible product owner um you know it's, it's interesting i work with the government a bunch of different times and no, i never had i never had a product owner who knew what they were talking about and it's it, it was a breath of fresh air to have someone who knew what the heck they were talking about um but yeah, I'll definitely, I'll see if he wants to hop in because he's super passionate about this stuff. And to see, and and to also help help you all understand uh, how, as someone who vowed to never work for the government again a long time ago, uh, but to, 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 to learn how, it wasn't until this role where I understood text, the, the role of tech, the role of, I didn't understand how, tech how much tech affected our lives and affected the lives of people around us. like I, I i didn't ever really understand the extent of which bad tech can can r ruin people uh or or or, or change or literally change uh have a significant bad tech can have a significant effect on the way that people are able to navigate the world and uh, i feel i feel so much more i feel so much differently about it now uh, after going through some of the stuff that we went through here. That's why that's why this project holds a lot to my heart. Yeah. Okay, so let's hop into Amazon. You, you have like, the goal tonight was to understand what the cloud was, not necessarily dive in with Amazon. I'm gonna hop in with Amazon. I'm gonna go kind of quick. Uh, you don't need to do, I'm not gonna hop in with Amazon. I lied to you. Um, the reason why I'm not gonna hop in with Amazon is not gonna happen with Amazon. I lied to you again. I, I I lied to you. Then I tried to not lie to you anymore. And then I I you know I doubled down. I lied to you again. And I'm sorry about that. Uh, we are gonna we're gonna hop into Amazon, um, to do what we're gonna do here. Uh, just because I think it's going to be helpful to get you to get you started in a uh, a major cloud platform like Amazon. So if you want to log into Amazon, you can create your own Amazon account. Uh, head over to console that it was a console.amazon.com. I don't know. If you just if you just Google AWS, I, I'm sure it'll take you to a sign up page. You can sign up for free. It does. It does take a credit card. Uh, you do have to input a credit card. What, what I'm going to be doing tonight will be free for you. There are free tiers of just about everything. You can do a pretty good amount inside of AWS for free. You can do a lot for free, but I'm giving you my disclaimer right now. Uh, I am, uh, this is not, this course is not to teach you about the cloud. This is, we, we want to understand the topics and we're just, I want you to see something up and running really quickly and how easy, I want you to see how easy it is to get up and running with something inside of the cloud, okay? Um, so you can sign up for it. You might've put in a credit card. Uh, should you follow along or just watch? I think you should just watch me, Pez, to be honest. Like this isn't a, I think you should just watch. Uh, we will do more implementations. Uh, and we'll do the more fun implementations next week, to be honest. But yeah, um, that's continuous delivery you should follow along uh, along for. But um, not necessarily today. I'm just gonna set up WordPress real fast. WordPress has a famous five minute setup, but I'm gonna show you how fast you can get started and how you can how, how easy it is to operate in a distributed nature uh, here. So I'm going to spin this up and I haven't done this in forever. It should be fine. Um, our unique ID, peace out. Have a great night. NMS hasn't charged me yet and I'm following along horizons. Yeah, second billing cycle. Uh, you likely, if you do it right, you shouldn't be charged for an entire year of usage, um, but eventually it might change up. So let me put in my two factor off. Education code. I'm tripping. I'm in the wrong one. Um, oh no, I gotta hurry up and finish fast. You all can see that. Let me shut down and remove all the services once I'm done too. Yeah, 100%. You, that, yeah, if you're doing that, you should be good to go. So, first things first the cloud. Remember, I told you there's a bunch of different services that allow you to utilize different resources, different cloud resources, uh, different computing resources. So, right here, we have a bunch of services. AWS has almost 200 services. This is what you're. This is what you would be paid for to be a, a cloud engineer or someone who's gonna be managing the cloud. You, you're getting paid to understand, uh, not you don't need to know all these services at all, but you need to know enough of the building blocks uh, and how and how you can stick the building blocks together again to solve problems. Uh, you're not signing with the root account, are you? Yeah, I, I am signing with the root account. I know it's I know it's uh, I know it's bad it's bad to do, but 
there are there i have i have some contingencies in place for not not going to do i have different um i do run different accounts i don't always run off of the root account i have different accounts for internal i have, I have a bunch of stuff but uh you know one day one of you one of y'all might get me i have contingencies in place uh major contingencies in place for some of the stuff um so i'm logged in right now and now you can just see all of these different things there's no there's no possible way that you could know in depth all of these things, but you can have a really good, a really good understanding of what some of the main ones are. And throughout your, throughout your time using a cloud provider, you will get more and more comfortable with each of the services. Okay. Um, there are some main ones that Amazon would love you to learn inside of basically each and one, each one of these things. But, uh, it, you know, it, it, it can be overwhelming. Each of the services has their own, all have their own set of rules that you have to learn. But for the most part, uh, the, you know, these all solve a similar thing. So like a lot of them have a lot of overlap. Like I can do the same thing with EC2 that I can do with light sale, to be honest. Uh, but EC2 just has some more features that I may need to use that makes things better for me. Um, you know, and honestly, depending on what it is, I can do the same thing with Lambda that I can do on EC2 or light sale. Um, you know, it, they all, they all provide, uh, there's a lot of overlap in what they, in what they solve different, a bunch of different storage things that have different, these different services, uh, solve storage in different ways. S3 is, uh, one of the biggest services It's object storage, uh, as opposed to EFS, which is, uh, you know, uh, it's an elastic file storage. So it's, it's networked, uh, file systems, but it's block storage. It allows you to, you know, have unlimited space on network files. It's way more expensive. And you know, there's, there's a whole bunch of different things that go on in here. And part of your journey into the cloud is understanding what these tools are and what, and you know, again, how you can use them. So we're going to get set up with, uh, WordPress. WordPress has a fa a famous five minute install. At least that's what they used to call it. I have no idea. I haven't installed WordPress in literal years, uh, like lots of years, but uh, you know, I'm hoping I still got it. You know, we can hop in and we can get it done. Normally I would just use something like Docker to spin this up really fast, but I don't necessarily want to do that. I'm going to install it uh, directly on here and get ready to go. But the first thing we're going to do is set up a server. Uh, Jesus farted. I love the name. Welcome to the channel. It's so good to have you around civil Android. Good to have you as well. Uh, Sator Pictures, Tori Pictures, welcome as well. Umix, good to have you. Moosey, welcome. What's that? M Medic, Medic, Medic New, welcome. Psycho Killer, welcome to the channel. Uh, Road, welcome. Uh, Dope Boy, welcome to the channel as well. Um, I think I got everyone else already. Good to have you all. All right, so here we go. Uh, WordPress again, like I said, WordPress, it run, WordPress basically runs the internet. Uh, like I, I think it's something like it's something absurd, like 40% of all websites or something, maybe higher than that it, are built off of WordPress. It's pretty crazy. Um, but it's a really good, it, it's, it is a good, uh, it's called a CMS. It's a content management system. It allows you to be able to have a website and for you to, uh, to separate basically the data input from the display uh, and, well, and then ultimately kind of tie it all back together. But it, it allows you to be able to manage a website easily. I hate WordPress, I'm not gonna lie to you. I hate WordPress, not because of the product itself, but because the management of WordPress is a hassle. Uh, the management of any LAMP stack based CMS. So WordPress, Drupal, Joomla, uh, there's, there's a concrete file. There's a bunch of them. They, I, I, if you've ever had to manage them, it can be very, very annoying and problematic. Um, and WordPress was not built for computing the computing done today. It's, it, it wasn't built. It really wasn't built for distributed computing. It works, uh, but it wasn't built for this. And so because of someone like me, who, who uh, I really believe in the, <laughs> the cloud model, I really believe in a lot of the features that the cloud has to offer. Um, it can be, it can be hard to work with, with something like this, but you can make it work. You could definitely could make it work. Uh, all right. One second. I heard something. This is not fitting the 12 factor app model. Um, I don't know. Actually, I, I, I actually don't know. Um, I haven't, I haven't looked at the 12 factor app model and I don't remember all the pieces of it. I don't know if it fits. I would have to analyze it real quick. Um, so 
No, it does not. It does not uh, at all. Uh, it for sure, if if for sure is going to without without significant changes, it's going to uh, it's going to fail. The uh, config is interesting, but I think you can make it past that. Uh, the build release run is going to be one of the bigger problems, uh, and it has to do it has to do with the dependency. Um, I mean, I guess, I guess you can make anything past these things, uh, but it has to do with the dependency uh, on, uh, there's a there's a codependency on the code and the database uh, in, the, in the way that it uses the database. Uh, it's very interesting. Like WordPress, WordPress is almost purely the database. A lot, like all of its configuration, everything is there uh, in a very odd way. It's, it's, it's a very, it's a very interesting way it's done uh, and it, it will cause some problems. Um, scale of your process, my, concurrency might be, might be a problem. Uh, port binding, uh, disposability, absolutely not, uh, has very poor disposability, but again, you can make this work. You can make it, it fall in here, but it's a lot of work. It's definitely a lot of work to do. So, uh, we, we, we actually did this. We tried to do this with, uh, with what's it called? What's the other what's, with Drupal? The, the government likes Drupal, which is basically enterprise WordPress, but trash here with less features and dumb, <laughs> to be honest. I don't know why they love it so much. Uh, but it's tough. It, it, it's really tough to manage. So we're going to use one of Amazon services called EC2. EC2 stands for Elastic Compute Cloud, and it allows us to just spin up a what you usually know of as a server. Okay. Now we 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 said hey, um, we have some other things. So LightSail is actually what when you think of hey, I want to go rent a server or a VPS or virtual private system from a from a cloud provider. When you go to DigitalOcean and get a droplet or you go to Linode and get a Linode. Um, this is what LightSail is. This is more akin to that. EC2 uh, is really a compute service. It really is defined by its compute capacity. What you're really paying for is the access to the CPU and the type of, you know, the power that you're getting and the RAM. Um, but you also get storage along with that. Um, but that, that storage is kind of a different service, which is interesting called EBS. It can get all the, the acronym soup can get super duper interesting. It can get really weird when you dive into that stuff that much, but essentially you can grab an instance uh, pretty quickly. I can grab an instance uh, real quick by clicking this button. One of the big things of the cloud that I that we that we glossed over that I really should have put in the slides, which I'll go back and put in the slides. The reason <laughs> enterprise WordPress were trash here, less features and dumb. Please quote me on that. I will say it over and over again. <laughs> that I like that is exactly how I feel about it. The one of the, the biggest reasons why the cloud is uh, so important today is we're working towards a model where uh, we want to get we want to get the human aspect as far away from these pro processes as possible. Uh, and the, one of the great things about the cloud is what it what it really is is the cloud is an is an API layer. So it's a it's a it's a software layer. It's basically a bunch of software over top of a bunch of hardware. And what that means is that we can actually access. AWS services, and we can actually provision and get AWS services, uh, not just in this console right here, we can do it programmatically. So we can write code to be able to do these things for us. We can submit commands to the uh, to the API to be able to, to build these things for us. So I could, I could put together uh, a command right now from the command line and get a server set up how I wanna get it set up. That's what we're gonna be learning about next week. Um, uh, so if you're interested in that all next week, that's what we'll be doing. But uh, that's, that's something that's great about it because uh, it gets kind of tough clicking around here sometimes. But if I want a new server, if I want a server right now, I can just click this button right here. First page right here is gonna say, hey, what AMI do you want? AMI stands for Amazon Machine Image. It's saying, hey, what basically, what operating system do you want? It's, it, AMIs are, are bigger than just operating system, but for all intents and purposes right now, uh, it says, hey, what operating system do you want? They do have Mac now as of last, uh, as of like the end of the year. Um, if you want, I'm going to click Ubuntu and just go ahead and select this here. You basically have pretty much unlimited configuration options here. Uh, th because right now the service that we're paying for is a compute service. We have some options here, a ton of options. Leave it on the free. If you're following along, leave it on the free tier eligible one, which is T2 micro. This type right here, this T2 and .nano, .micro, this is the server class and its size. So these server classes provide you different things, Ts and Cs, 
And if we go down farther, there should be some other stuff like M's and D's. These are different servers that give you different types of capacity for certain things. Sometimes your workload needs much more computing power. So you need CPU heavy things. Sometimes you need lots of Ram. Maybe like you don't need a lot of CPU, but your workload takes a lot of Ram. So you will get a server that uh, is, is highlighted for Ram. I think those are our server. This is like our level of servers in here. Um, that would be good for Ram. Maybe you need something that has a lot of graphics processing power. That's where your P servers might come into place. And so there's a bunch of different classes of servers, depending on what your workload is. And again, part of getting into the cloud is to know uh, what, what kind of makes sense there. These T servers are kind of general purpose servers. That's what we can use and get set up. Instance details, it gives you a bunch of stuff. We're not gonna go through all that because again, the goal is not to learn AWS tonight. It's just to get a little hands-on with the cloud. Uh, you can leave all this stuff by default. If I want 20 servers, I can put 20 servers in here just like that and get 20 servers. That is the power of AWS. So I just put one here because that's all I need. I can leave everything else the same. Add storage. Uh, I can make all this configurable. I get up to 30 gigs for free. I'll change it to 30. I don't need it. Um, you know, I can leave it at eight. We don't really need 30 gigs, but I'll do that. Tags are a bit of metadata that you can use to uh, to manage these servers. It's just a little bit of data you can use for filtering and stuff like that. Uh, I'll give this server a name. The name I'll give it is uh, Pipelines Tests. All right, security group. The one thing about the cloud uh, is that security is important. Nowadays with computing, security is always very, 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 very important. And that means that, uh, you know, we need to we need to be security focused first. So by default, um, stuff, stuff done in AWS will generally not, uh, you will have to provide explicit access to these things. By default, nothing will have access to these things and you must provide pretty much explicit access to these things. And that, that part can be pretty interesting. Uh, there's again, if you're interested in some of that stuff, you can talk, you can head over to the, the horizons class that's in uh YouTube that we do on every Friday, uh, where you can get into identity and access management and you get into roles and all the other stuff and figuring out how this stuff works. Security groups are a little, uh, firewall to allow stuff through. And so, uh, for this, um, we're going to need, uh, uh, we're just gonna open up port 80 so you all can get there if you'd like. And there we go. Review and launch, launch, um, key pair. Uh, by default, you you don't have well, you don't have access to be able to log into systems via password authentication. You must use SSH key pairs to be able to log into a system. I already have SSH key pair set up. Um, make sure that you have it, or else you will not be able to access the system. Um, so just like that, we have a system that has been provisioned, uh, and that was actually pretty slow. Uh, way to set that up, but it's getting provision right now. It'll just take a few seconds to get up and running, which is really nice. As soon as I'm and running, I'm going to get logged all into it. Just made some amazing chocolate chip protein muffins. I would love, I would love something 100%. That sounds like, you know, you're right, right up my alley for sure. I'll take it out of milk though. Kids drink it all. I'm not a big milk fan to be honest with you. Not a big milk fan. I stopped drinking milk a long time ago. Um, and I'll still, I'll still, if I eat cereal or something, I'm down for milk, but uh, I, I'm not like, it's not like a, it's not like a, I'm not like, oh, you know, that doesn't, I, I'm not a vegetarian or anything like that or vegan. I just, I don't know, just never really, never really loved it all that much. And I waste a lot of it. I, I put it in cereal, but I don't drink it afterwards. So, you know, big waste. I do the plant milk stuff. Yeah, my wife does, uh, she does like almond milk and stuff. Um, so we've been doing much more of that. I haven't purchased milk in a long time. Set up WordPress on Azure in five minutes. It was a template though. Yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty easy to do on a lot of things. <laughs> Drupal makes you angry. I'm in the, the oat milk train. So I think I am as well. I've had oat milk once in my life and it was in a coffee and I love, I loved, I loved the way it tasted. Like I loved it. it it's like, it's like, it's, it's thicker. Like it's thicker than, than the almond milk. Uh, and so I might be on the oat milk train as well. Um, seems like something I would like. All right. So our server's up and running and we can grab the IP address of this system right here. Um, we'll click on our instance details. We can grab the IP address. This is a public IP address that should be available for all of you. Uh, it gives you an IP address and it gives you a public DNS address. So I'll, I'll provide this IP address to you in a little bit right now. It won't do anything because we don't have anything set up on the server, but we're going to go ahead and get set up now. 
Let's see. SSH uh, root at um. I'm just get logged into my development server so I can actually do what I need to do. Come on, come on, come on. Type that in wrong. I have a long password and I, I'm a terrible typist. So there we go. Whoops. All right, so I'm gonna get logged into this first system. Uh, but what I'm also gonna do is I'm going to utilize the other service which we're about to use to be able to set up some of this stuff. I'm going to set up a um, uh, another service. So we said that on one system, if we go back to, if we go back to our drawing, we said that we are gonna have Linux, Apache and PHP on this. This is gonna be our EC2 instance. We're gonna install those things really quick on there, but our database is gonna be in a completely separate place. The, uh, what we're gonna use here is a tool called RDS. Thank you so much, Nick. Thanks for coming through. Appreciate it. I will uh, do my best. We're gonna, we're, I, think, I think we're gonna be able to finish up in the next 13 minutes, I hope. All right, so we're gonna use a different tool. So we're gonna use a different uh, compute item. So RDS is for databases. It's relational database um, system, uh, a service, relational database service. And it, you know, MySQL is a relational database. You use a SQL. Uh, and on here, we can go ahead and spin up a database to be able to access this thing. And so uh, it's funny, we actually already have one. So I'm actually gonna use this because I've never used it before. Uh, but we have this horizons out example. We built this on Friday in horizons. You can just create a database like, like by clicking this button uh, and you can go through and create a database. And so uh, one of the things is, it's like, hey, I have this thing that I have access to that I don't need to worry about the underlying system. I don't need to worry about the management of it. It's, these are called managed services. So RDS allows for fully managed databases. So Amazon takes care of making sure the operating system is patched and up to date and make sure the database is good and stuff. You just basically are given a connection string to the database and you can, uh, and you can get in and you can, um, connect to it via over over a network you get you get you get the uh the ip address or the dns address and you can connect to it over a network knowing that address what command did you use to ssh into the instance so i'm not i'm not actually ssh in yet uh this was my i ssh from <laughs> from my my system to a development system that i use the command to actually log into it because we have to use those keys all right uh the command to log in is ssh all right, and then, so normally it's SSH, the user. So we use an Ubuntu server. So the uh, the user on uh, Amazon is Ubuntu. And then at, and then the IP address, uh, whoops. And then it will be the IP address of the system. So I need to go back and copy the IP address of the system. My bad, let's go back to EC2. And pipelines test is what we're using. So I need to copy this IP address right here. So a normal SSH command looks like this. SSH, Ubuntu, at, and the IP address. So SSH, which is for secure shell, the user that you want to log in as, and then at IP address. That's a normal command. And so if I try to do this, it'll try to log in. I'll type in yes. It won't work because it I can't log in. I, I didn't give it my credentials. So to give it my credentials, I have to do SSH dash I to specify an identity file. This is how you use SSH keys on uh, to be able to log in. And so I have my I have my uh, file in here, which was mastermind pride 07 That's just the date that I created this. I should probably rotate it out. I usually do it every six months, uh, but I have this key right here. And this is the key that I told it to use. Then the rest is the same. So Ubuntu at and paste this in. This is an SSH command. And so this will let me into my system. How do I know I'm in my system? Because I get the message of the day here. Welcome to Ubuntu, you know, everything's good to go. I'm in. It also tells me I'm this user at this internal IP address. Uh, and so, yeah, that, that's pretty helpful. So I'm in the system now. I'm ready to go. First thing that you should do whenever you get into a new system is I'm just gonna do a, uh, an update really quick just to make sure we're good to go. Uh, make sure all the packages are up to date so that we can get everything that we need to get installed which should be pretty fast. Will SSH copy ID work uh, between EC2 instances? Yes, uh, it, it, it it can. Yes, Dorian, yes, you, you can, it will work just fine. If you'd like, 
just be careful because if you do do that and it won't change what key it, th it like shows you in the console is there, but you can do that to make sure your stuff gets around. It does work. Uh, every, everything kind of works. Um, so I actually think you can, I think it's possible to enable a password login. I think, um, if you want to go into your SSH config and do it, uh, I haven't tried it, but I do think it's possible to do it. Like you kind of have full control once you are in there, but yeah. What's up realty co. How are you doing today? What's up exquisite as well? Opulent sloth. Good to have you. Thank you for the follow. Uh, positive pessimist. I think I already got you. Yeah. Cause we got Jesus farted as well. <clears throat> Good to see you all tonight. So we're logged in. We ran a little update here and everything's good to go. Let's go ahead and look at the five minute install for WordPress. Should be pretty simple to do. Where we got before you install requirements on the server side. All right. Whack. What I'm about to do is not to do this. Uh, is this .org? Yes, .org. Support documentation. Install WordPress before you install. What is what is uh what's what's happening here? First steps of WordPress. Obviously, their site isn't working. No big deal. Uh, um, it, it's pretty easy to install. I'll show you what to do. All right, here we go. I don't even, I don't even really need to, to know what to do here. Uh, I, I know how to set up WordPress. So again, you need uh, WordPress, you need a couple different things. I was hoping that it gave me the Apache install commands because I might, I might need some extra Apache packages, but I can get it all installed automatically. Here's a handy guide, uh, download and extract. Uh, let's see, detailed instructions. I don't need the detailed instructions. I just need, this, this site doesn't even work. It doesn't even work at all. Um, things to know before installing. I just wanted to give me, maybe the screen isn't wide enough. Oh, may, oh may, yeah, maybe I have to, oh, let's see. There's nothing under requirements. Is anyone else, is like, is anyone else on this and can see and see what it is? It's fine. It's, it's really not a bad, it's really not a big deal. Here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we need a couple different things. I also, also don't, I see, the problem is I don't know what version of PHP to install either. So we're not even gonna do any of that. Here's what we're gonna do real fast. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're just, I'm just trying to show you a distributed computing model. I'm just going to install Docker really fast uh, because I don't, I don't, I really don't feel like fighting with PHP and Apache because of the way that PHP and Apache kind of work together. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can do it. Uh, either with PHP FPM and having PHP run as its own service or daemon, uh, or with it included inside of Apache, but Apache needs to have some configuration to kind of make that work. I'm not dealing with that. If they're going to give me the commands to do it automatically. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to do sudo apt install, um, Docker. It doesn't really matter. Um, let's actually do, can I get podmin on here? Uh, okay. Let's just do Docker IO. Docker. Let's see what this gives us. Let's see if this gives us a working Docker setup. Don't worry, you don't need to know, you don't need to worry about Docker or <laughs> it doesn't work for you as well. See, this is why this is why we don't put a lot of hope and faith into it. No big deal. And so I saw Docker. Um, hold on, super pseudo Docker. Um, hmm. um, I say I hate so I hate installing Docker with the package manager really quick. But hold on, Ubuntu. I know there's an issue with with Docker versus Docker Engine versus Docker IO. But hold on, here we go. Ubuntu Docker install. I don't feel like doing it manually. I just want them to give me a. Okay, this is fine. This is. I'll just do it like this really quick because this will give us the fast. Actually, no. Ubuntu install Podman. Yeah, app search Docker. The, so yeah, I can I can search for the. I'm not look. I don't really care so much about the Docker package name. I know that there's issues with the packaged up version of Docker um, there already. And I don't want to deal with that. So app update. I did that, and then I did I did this. Oh, this is Debian in particular, which should be fine. Uh, did I spell it wrong? Yeah, it, it definitely has an outdated version. 
unable to locate Podman, and I did an update, right? So do apt. I already did an update, right? I want to see if I can get Podman really fast. Uh, 20, oh, 2010 and newer. Okay. Uh, for 2010 and newer, recommend using. Ah, okay. That kind of sucks. Uh, I wonder if this would work for provide packages, project landing, and newer. All right. No problem. I'll just, I, I will do Docker search. Uh, sudo app. So give me a bunch. Uh, yeah, so this is what I didn't want. Uh, and I can, I can search for it, but I actually, I actually know it's uh, apt move. Let me let me remove the regular Docker. I don't really like that. Do I like Pyman over Docker? Um, I don't know. I don't know a ton about it. Someone uh, told told me about it uh, before, and I tried it out, and it works fine. Um, and I, you know, without a service running. If it doesn't have to be a service running, I'm cool with that. That makes perfect sense to me. Um, I don't feel that strongly about it, to be honest. But yeah. Docker. I'm trying to think, there's, there's two of them. I swear this is one. I guess it's not one. I think Docker will do it. Um, But I also could just do another search. But I, I'm trying to, I'm, I, I know my thing is, here's what, here's what the problem is. I ran into significant issues before. I, I'm trying not to have to do it. Nah, I'm just gonna do it this way. Sorry, y'all, I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna install the real Docker version um, because I, I ran into some significant issues with, uh, with networking last time I used the internal Docker package. And that's why I'm so like, I'm like, uh, I don't wanna do it. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna install. It'll take five minutes to install it real quick. Problem with OpenSUSE repo does work in 1804. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do this real quick, real quick. So paste anyway. Let's go ahead and get what we need in here. Install it. So if you don't know what Docker is, we are going to dive into containers in this course. Uh, but what containers allow you to do is to basically package up an application, uh, everything that it needs to run. So all of the different tools and libraries and binaries uh, and application code that it needs to run and allows us to package it up in this little consistent format. And essentially we can run it anywhere where we have the same version of Docker or newer. Uh, our code can run no problem. And so, you know, it fixes the problem of, hey, works on my, like it works on my machine. Why doesn't it work on your machine? Uh, people don't have to install a bunch of packages onto their system. All they gotta know is the, Im the Docker image ID um, and they can download the full working thing and be able to run it no matter what. I do like Docker a lot. Docker is where you park your boats. Uh, yeah, you know, so first off, I don't think you all, I don't think you all knew this, but uh, your boy, your boy was in fact a boat owner, you know. I, I, I at the age of uh, at the age of like 23, 24, your boy had a boat, 28 foot boat called the Lady Harriet, that we were able to secure uh, off of a shady, shady Craigslist dealings. Okay, it never touched water, but we did have parties on it. We did wear captain's hats. It was parked on a one way street in the middle of Baltimore, and the cops came up and said, "Hey." We don't know the rules against why you can't have this boat basically blocking this one way street, but you got to move it. And we said. We don't have a truck. <laughs> we don't. We can't move this boat. And then we parked it across the street behind somebody's house. And I don't know how we got it in there. And then someone stole the boat. They stole the boat. They stole it for the trailer. They found the boat in the middle of the road. You know, just stories for days. Stories for days. Boat never touched water. I have. I don't even think that boat was seaworthy at all. We had all these grand plans to get this boat fixed. We also bought a 1985 K5 Blazer off of Craigslist. Less than 500 bucks, uh, with, you know, super old, big old swamp tires, spray painted it black, put some red racing stripes on it. We should drive around and have a great time. You know, we just had a, you know, we were young, dumb and free. Uh, like this, this whole, this 28 foot boat with trailer cost us total 1200 bucks. And so you got a, you got a house full of uh, bachelors, you know, house full of bachelors, young, young fellas with okay jobs <laughs> we can split to we can split the 1200 bucks no problem and you know we had a boat it never never touched the water i'm pretty sure i would have sank but never touched water but fishing vessel lady harry i'm fine i'm gonna find some pictures i'm definitely gonna find some pictures uh before we're before we're done here let me get this uh, set up and i'll find uh i know i have some pictures of it good times definitely definitely had some good times we were i mean you know 
I'll give you, I'm just give, giving you a little bit of information, you know. So this this house was where we lived it was middle Baltimore. Um, this, I, I went to college in Baltimore, and so this was my this was my senior year and like the year after. Uh, so yeah, so 22, 23, um, and at the time I had a I had a black Mustang. I have it was a V6 Mustang, but it was one of the newer body styles. I got it for super cheap. But it was fully loaded. I I don't know. I mean, I actually have no idea how I got it for cheapest. I got it for I got it for like fourteen grand or something like that. But like I I had a job. I put down. I had money saved from school. I put down like over half on it. So I only had a. I was only paying for an eight thousand dollar car basically. Uh, but it was really nice. It was really nice. The guy I lived with, same age as me. He had a yellow Mustang. I mean, I mean a yellow a yellow Camaro. And the other guy who lived there, had, he bought a he bought this like blue souped up Celica GT, and like. Every, I mean, people thought we were drug dealers. <laughs> and I was like, no, like I have an $8,000 car loan. I have a, I like, like uh, someone literally came up to us and was like, basically like, Hey, like, what, like, I'm not joking. Like whatever you're, whatever y'all are into, like I, I'm in, I'm in, I'm into it. And I, we were like, bro, like we, I go to, I go to my, I drive very far every day to go make uh, you know, at the time I think I was making like $36,000 and I was like, I drive very far to go make $36,000, sir. Uh, this is, this is all I got. My, my rent was like 200 bucks and I had no other care in the world. That's when life was good. That's why I was able to afford boats. Uh, so it's not about how much you make. It's about how much you're able to spend on whatever you want to spend it on like boats. Okay. Just, just let you know. We had, we got some guy knocked on our door and was like, y'all want to buy some pit bulls. And we bought, we bought some pit bulls. And, you know, we just bought some dogs. And like, unfortunately he's, these, these dogs were sick. Uh, these dogs had Parvo. I didn't know what Parvo was. It was the first time I was introduced to anything like that. Why wild, wild stories, you know, wild, wild, young Aaron stories long ago. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing what people consider rich. I was, I mean, it is amazing what people consider rich. I was, the, I felt like the richest person in the world at the time because I, you know, I didn't have any, I didn't have any bills. I was spending my money on gas for one for my three hour trips to work and whatever else I wanted to spend it on. I didn't have that much. But I had no obligations. But you know, now that I'm an adult, I have many, many, many more, many more obligations. Okay, I don't. I certainly don't have boat money anymore. Definitely don't have boat money anymore. All right, at fingerprint, I usually skip uh, the fingerprinting process, especially for a server I'm going to tear down. Uh, but no big deal. Let's uh, let's. I don't think I need to do this part. Use the following to add stable repository. Cool. I'll add it. I've done this enough times where this hopefully will just work. And you know, you know, you can get paid a lot to do exactly what I'm doing now to copy and paste. Now be careful when you're copying and pasting, but understand what you're doing. Like I've done, I know every, everything that I'm pasting in, I, I'm confident in it because I've done it a million times and I know what each, I know what every single thing does. Um, not that I've memorized the Docker process, but looking at these commands, I know exactly what they are doing. So, you know, I don't have to print it as bananas at self checkout. You know, it, it's that's that is one of the that's that is one of the best uh, pieces of your life when you get to the pieces of your life where you can go to the grocery store and you don't have to you know you don't have to figure out what your what your you know you you have a general idea how much you can spend in your head but you don't gotta you don't gotta be pressed about it. Man, I'm following you into the copy paste thing. Yeah, I mean yes, <laughs> you you get really good at copying and pasting. Um, as you're kind of living throughout, uh, your, your tech career, you get really good at it. And, but again, it's really important to, to know what you're doing though. Like to not copy and paste anything you see off offline. The Docker website is a relatively safe one in comparison. Uh, but still be cog, be, be, be cognizant of what you are typing and pasting in here. Uh, and so all this did, all this did was kind of set up our computer, get a couple things ready, uh, grab the proper, uh, and grab the proper repositories to know where to go and get Docker from. Um, and then, you know, and now it's installing those things. Which has you in the celebrate black excellence section today. I love it. That's that I, you know, amazing. It makes me feel, makes me feel pretty good. Uh, you know, I hope it's, it's exciting black excellence, you know, I'm, I'm a black guy, you know, and hopefully what I'm doing here is excellent for you, but that's pretty dope. How come Docker has a long installation process versus just doing sudo apt install Docker? So 
doing the sudo after the install Docker will work. Uh, that will work to get a doc to get Docker set up. Uh, but in my experience, it gives it gives a couple of it gives you a couple of problems. So the reason why doing it manually is a longer process is because when you do that apt install Docker, uh, app is a package manager, it's the advanced package tool. And so basically it's up to Docker or it's, it's up to, it's up to whoever's managing these packages to make sure that as new versions and things come out, that they package them up for a specific version of Linux and get them to where they need to be. Uh, this doesn't, this generally doesn't happen. This doesn't always happen. Um, and so the version that you get with app is generally a little bit older, especially because I'm using the long-term support version of Ubuntu. Um, and so what, what the commands that I'm pasting in now will allow us to get the latest version directly from Docker uh, and get it set up for our system. And that's the reason why it is a little bit more, uh, helpful. Control C and Control V make you make you know like you look uh, make you look like you know a lot. That is very very true. So we're good to go here. Um, I think we're all set up with what we need to do. There's there are some other things that are going on here that uh, that will it'll take you through the setup. We don't need that right now. So right now, uh, Docker's probably not running. Oh, it is running. It's running. It's here. It's available. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do uh, sudo Docker uh, pull WordPress. All right, and so this is the interesting piece of this. The WordPress container image only contains those three things. It actually only contains, uh, there's no database inside of here. Uh, for, uh, for you to run the WordPress container, they'll actually advise that you use something called Docker Compose, which allows you to use uh, a database that's kind of separate from this thing. Uh, but right now we're gonna use this uh, to, to spin it up. L luckily it has Linux already ready. It's got Apache and it's got PHP already set up and ready to go. We're gonna set this up and get going in a second. Hey, Mastermind, just wondering if you'll cover Tmux or adding more power to the CLI at some point in your series. Dark Summoner, phenomenal question. Y yes, for sure we we will. Uh, we'll probably start to incorporate that at a couple different times. It, the, the Saturday, we did a build series on Saturday, which kind of just helped people get some, uh, some, make some changes, like uh, get their Vim and stuff set up, uh, change their colors and stuff like that. Yes, I do like, I'm, I'm, I am a fan of Tmux, uh, 100%. Uh, we will, we will do some of that and for sure we will cover a lot of that in the, uh, so in, in March, there will be a, a Linux excursion, which will be a six part series in Linux. And we'll definitely dive into some of that. All right. Vim tutorials. I mean, I, I, I feel like I'm not the Vim tutorials person. Like, yes, I can give you all some, I, some Vim knowledge, but, uh, pe people like you teach are, are much better equipped to do Vim tutorials and, and prime and everybody else. Uh, I, I'm not here. <laughs> I, I'm not the, yes, I can help you out a bit, but, uh, I'll just get you started and then pass you along to people who are much better with them than I am. So here we go. Absolutely. Hey, what's up? I, I'm, I'm going to hit you back on uh, Twitter for sure. Absolutely. We are, we, I, we, I guess we definitely need to talk. I for sure. Okay. So here we go. Let's, uh, let's just get this running real quick. Again, tonight is not about learning how to Docker works. We really just want to learn about the cloud. We learned enough about the cloud already. And we just want to talk about distributed computing. I simply want to show you how this is set up, uh, where in a way that, uh, where, where the pieces are distributed right now, it's only gonna be distributed in two places. The database is going to be running in RDS and the rest of the application is gonna be running right here in, uh, in Docker. And it's going to work together, uh, to you from, from, you know, from the other end. And all we gotta do, all we gotta do to make this work. Uh, first I need to log, I actually need to log into this database, uh, to, to create a database really quick. Actually. Yeah, I do. Because then you all will have the master password. Um, yeah, you all will have the master password. I don't want, uh, you know what? All right. Let's do it'll be the, uh, let me create a user real quick. So Docker allows us to just quickly run. We can run this. Uh, we downloaded the container image and with this container image, we can actually go ahead and deploy uh, a singular container based on this thing. So if I do a sudo Docker, uh, images, we will see here that I have one WordPress container image, but if I do a sudo Docker PS, Although we have an image downloaded, there is no uh, application running right now. I could do a, uh, a, a sudo docker run dash ITD 
Um, and then just do something like uh, SP 8080 WordPress. And I could do this and it would start up. I know it's a lot there. Don't, don't sweat it. We, we will do an excursion on this, but it will start up a, uh, a WordPress doc version. But if I hit up, um, if I hit up this, this page, this ain't going to work. Okay. This is not gonna work for a, a number of reasons. Uh, but one of the, one of the biggest ones being that I, I think I opened up the, let me make sure I open up the security here. Our right, support 80 is open. So that's good. Uh, but one of the reasons why it's not going to work is because one, uh, this application is not set up to work properly yet. Now it might give us, it might give us a, a login. I mean, uh, like a starter page maybe, but it doesn't have a database back to it. WordPress needs to have a database uh, attached to it. And so right now our, our normally your work, your database will be on the same system, distributed computing model. Right now we're going to set, we, we've separated our database from this thing. Um, if I go to, if I go to hub.docker.com, oops, it did this on Saturday. It hasn't done this all day today yet. So that's been good. Gives us all some weird things. Yep, you got, oh, you got the WordPress setup page. Okay, so yeah, maybe, did I not, um, so you you were able to run this and get the and get the WordPress setup page? Let me see, uh, ITD, port 80 to port 80. Uh, it's, it's passed over to 80. Oh, is WordPress not running? Is WordPress not running in port 80 in the container? Uh, it might not be, eh, it should be running in port 80. Maybe it's running in like 88 in the container. Let me see. Let me go look at the Docker hub page. Let's see. Uh, sign in. I know I opened it up. I opened up the, uh, the stuff here, but let's go see. Uh, again, they normally tell you to run it with, um, they normally tell you to run it with Docker, uh, Docker Compose, but let's see some network. DB host. So we're gonna have to set these options in a second. Oh yeah. So it's 8080. Okay, cool. 8080 is it. So let's see. You know what? All right. Now we can do this. I'm gonna stop the container. And then I'm going to restart it. Uh, port. So it runs on 80, 80, 80, 80, 80. Um, and was it WordPress? How you doing? Well worth welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for the follow code junkie gaming. Welcome as well. Jake into the North. Welcome. Uh, us. What's it? Oscars. Welcome. Better fly boy. Good to have you. Thank you so much for the follow. Uh, Nast Q, welcome to the channel. Head space and timing, welcome. Good to have you all here on the channel. What's up, Anthrax? Welcome to the channel. Good to have you all. All right, so we got this thing running now. And if we do Docker PS, it is running. We should be able to get to it now. I'm assuming. I'm assuming it will give us at least a setup page. But it also might not because of the thing I used to have to install, by the way, I'm still Docker IO, I'm not sure what the difference is. Uh, yeah, that that's fine. Oh, dot IO and not dash IO. I was using dash IO. That should be fine. You should still be good to go. Um, 80, 80, 80 to port 80 in the container. Oh, 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 80, 80 out here. Look at the port mapping is weird. Oh no, the 80 TCP. Interesting. I, I would expect that we would at least get the setup page. It seems like, oh, well, 8080 wouldn't work here because no, so 80 in the system would have worked, but real quick, let me just do this just to make sure. And then we'll fix it in a second. Whoa, security group. Let's just go ahead and And that's zero. And no, it shouldn't be HTTP. It shouldn't be HTTPS. Maybe that's the problem. Oh, oh yeah, there it is. It probably worked the first time. You're probably right. 
Um, but first, I got to do this. Okay, I didn't realize my browser was uh, defaulting into HTTPS. Hmm, I didn't realize that at all. That that won't work. HTTPS definitely won't work. And there we go. So it does give you this installation, but this this won't this so this won't persist. Uh, so I can actually set this up now if I want. Um, and it's gonna allow me to connect to a database right now, and it's gonna set up my stuff accordingly. And so if I type in database password, is it gonna type it in? Oh, this is trash. I don't really want you to see the database password. I actually don't know that. Actually, we need to set up the database real quick. So I'm gonna go to RDS. <laughs> you will be secure. Uh, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. So let's go to our database really quick. Let's log into it. Um, so you won't be able to log into my database, but I'm gonna log into it really quick and get set up and get a, a database set up really quick that we can use for this installation process. So the way that you log in, to um, something like this is, I'll do it from my local machine because I think I have I think I have the client set up here. Do I have my SQL? Uh, sudo apt install my SQL client. You gotta learn how to spell client right, and I'll get that installed. So we're we're talking about a relational database here. Uh, so I'm going to use my, I'm going to use my SQL client to connect to a remote MySQL instance. Okay. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, um, I don't care if you guys know a database password, just not the root database password, even though we're going to delete this thing somewhere anyway, but I'm going to do MySQL dash H, which is going to specify a remote host. I'll paste in that remote host right here. Uh, dash U, uh, right now I'm going to, I'm going to log in as root, uh, because, or is it admin? I think it's admin is the, is the user. And I don't remember what I made the password. That might not be the password. That's not the password. Yeah, that's not the password right there at all. But it's hanging, which makes me feel like it's not a, uh, this feels like it's a network problem. So we'll check that out in a second. I think I asked this last year at some point, or maybe not, but would you consider creating your own site for courses uh, on certain topics? Yes. Um, I changed my mind on on that. Uh, I used to I used to say that I would not con I wouldn't create my own site for something like that. But absolutely, I'm actually going to do that. Pro Evil. So, um, what that will, what that's going to look like is all the stuff that currently exists is going to continue to exist. Um, some of the some of the smaller topics uh, we may do some pre-recorded courses for to allow people who want to go through self-paced, but the pre-recorded content and the site for courses that I'm probably going to create is going to be around the much larger like walking you through an entire project like and not like a not like a oh here's a project for us to build some things in Terraform like more like the setup that we're doing now where like hey you work at this company and this is what they have. They have this whole thing and we're gonna go through the entire project of taking it from this thing to this thing or or building from this thing to this thing, like with context is probably what that will be created for rather than uh, the same thing that's done here. But yeah, isn't there an added subscription? Oh, for a marketplace. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so 77, sure, uh, maybe, possibly. Uh, pro it possibly could be quicker, 100%. Uh, the problem is though, uh, usually when that happens, it, it is set up in a way that's a little more custom and we'd have to figure out how to properly use whatever that image would be. Um, so yeah, I mean, that, that could work just, just as well. Uh, let's see, why didn't it let us in? Let's check the security groups for this. I thought anyone could access this. I hope it's not going to, hold on real quick make sure not to accidentally show you on my IP address, which no, it, uh, oh, okay, got it. I know what happened. Uh, my IP address is not there. Uh, let's see. That should be fine, because it's the default port, but maybe I have to give it a port, maybe. Or maybe it's not admin. Oh, that's, that's the wrong password for sure. Uh, error can't connect to my SQL. See, it, that, that's a different, that's a, mm, that's weird. Um, let me, what was the password? 
Hmm, it's giving me, it's, this is weird. It's giving me connection errors. Uh, this, this looks like a networking problem, but my SQL in Aurora has an inbound rule for anybody to connect provided they know the username and password. If we, if we type in the uh, username and password incorrectly, we would get an instant, we would get an instant error. This on the other hand is, I think I, you know what it is? I think I actually, no, I think I have the wrong um, URL or the wrong connection string. I think. Maybe Horizon's example. No, that looks right. Let's see. Yeah, no, that should be it. Was there a web development bootcamp going on at the start of this month? Yeah, it, so it's actually going to it's going to start in March now, uh, just for the timing of when other people could help. Uh, it's going to start in March. This is going to be a web development bootcamp. What's the difference between running a Docker MySQL image versus uh, running AWS RDS? Nothing. Um, so no, there's nothing in besides the way that the service is running and the underlying features which you get. Um, the only reason we're trying to do it this way is because we're not we don't care about getting WordPress working. We don't care about WordPress at all. I uh, just wanted to show you an application that was working in a distributed nature, uh, such as this. Not really sure why it's not connecting. Let, let me try from the system here. Um, and so running it right on the system doesn't really follow. Well, it's so interestingly enough, uh, running it directly on the system does in fact, does in fact, that is, when you are running Docker and you are connecting those images together like that, you're connecting those containers that are running, uh, that is distributed computing, just to be very clear. So if you are familiar with Docker, if we were to run a container instance right here locally, right now, that is fine. That um, that would, uh, that is a distributed computing model, 100%. We're trying to get it to work in a completely different space. But yeah, you can't give an Aurora serverless V1 a cluster public IP. You can access Aurora serverless one via only from within a, but only from within a VPC. Okay, so I, sh I should actually be able to connect from here. Um, that makes sense. Cool, I should be able to access from this system. And so we'll try that right now. Yeah, this one, it is serverless. So, uh, so MySQL dash uh, H and let's bring up our host again. Host dash U, uh, which was admin dash P. And I, again, I, I don't remember what the password we used was. Okay, there we go. So that worked. Thank you. That because now we are inside of the VPC for people. This is this is some extra cloud stuff, virtual private cloud. Uh, it, the reason I couldn't connect is because I tried to connect from my local computer, and because of the way that this cloud service is set up, uh, I could not access via uh, via outside of the virtual private cloud that was available here in my system. I've actually never used serverless RDS. Uh, so that we just spun it up because I had never used it before. So that, that's helpful. You taught me something new today. I did not know that at all. Positive pessimist. Thank you. Pretty quick, you know, with the answer. Thank you very much. Um, also, someone hopped in and said hello and I missed, I missed it. I saw it and then I missed it. And let me see if I can find it. Uh, Shawnee says, if you're still here, what up? How you doing? Hope you're having a great night. All right, so we're in, uh, and so we need to set up a space for this. So show, we are in a database right now. And if I show databases, we need to go ahead and create a database that's ready for WordPress really quick. And so I'm gonna create one. What you create a database is to create a database, create database. You learn how to type first. And we're gonna call this uh, pipelines underscore WordPress. All right, just like that, that database is created. If we click show databases again, we now have pipelines WordPress uh, here. All right, now I gotta go back and see if I can remember. I haven't I haven't done any SQL stuff in a long time. Let's see, create um, user. Nah, I'm just gonna Google it just so I, I don't mess it up. I don't wanna mess up the database. Um, My SQL create user. And no, no, I just want uh, create user identified by this and whoops. And so this is going to create a user for our database. I'm gonna create a specific WordPress user. So create user um, and I will call this, uh, I'll call the user W, uh, let's call it pipelines WP, pipelines underscore WP. Um, 
Actually, I'm just gonna call it pipelines user. We're trying to remember this. Pipelines user is what we're gonna use here. Uh, identify it by password. Uh, I will leave password in there. That's gonna be actual password. You all won't be able to connect to this. That's great because you can't get in this VPC. So it doesn't really matter what the password is. And I will make the password password one, two, which is a terrible password. You should never use this, but very, very exciting. Not a big deal. Now I've created the user. I've created the database. Now I need to give access for this user to the database. And I'm trying to remember the commands for this grants. Ah, whatever. Let's, uh, password one, two, three is better. That's why we switched it up to one, two. People guess password one and people guess password one, two, three. No one guesses password one, two. It's, you know, you know, it, it, nobody. All right. It's, it's one of the most secure passwords out there. Um, my SQL grant privileges. See, this is why I tell people, you all are watching me Google things. I know what to do. I know exactly what needs to happen. Uh, I know how databases work. I understand all these things. I'm never gonna. I'm never going to memorize that. I don't. I don't work with relational databases enough to memorize the syntax for granting privileges. Um, and you know, but I've, I've seen it enough times. So when I know the command, I'll, I'll see it. Like when I see it, I'll, I'll know that it's right. And yeah, grant all privileges on this database to this user. This is exactly what I want. I might need to do it identified by as well, but let's see, you know, let's see, no, 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 no. Okay, there we go, paste it in. So I wanna grant all privileges on database name. So the database that we have right here is pipelines underscore WordPress. And then to username. And this is the user that we created, pipelines user, okay? And I might needed, I might, I might have needed to add it the uh, section about identified by password one two, but it's okay. So now, if we go back to our setup page that we were in the middle of, uh, our database, our database name, we need to give it the database name that we created, which was Pipelines WordPress. And this is going to set up the connection information for us. And this one was Pipelines user, and the password was password one, two, and the database host. This is where the database host is. And so this is where I'm gonna paste in this right here. Table prefix, I'm cool with that. And I'm gonna submit it. Error didn't work. Let's see, cluster east, uh, come here, database host is down. Let me try again. Uh, pipelines, WordPress, pipelines, pipelines user. Let me make sure I got all that right. Pipelines user. Grant all privileges on pipelines, WordPress. All right, am I, do I need the, oh yeah, flush privileges. Thank you. Uh, privileges is the word that I've, I've spelled incorrectly the most amount of times ever in my life, specifically when dealing with databases, okay? All right, just just so you know. Uh, th this So this might've been the answer. Uh, it also might be that I have to identi uh, identify, do the identify by password um section here um as well and identified by password one two let's try this and then now let's flush privileges let's see if this is any better oh thank you my password's wrong man man y'all y'all are just better than me y'all are better than me y'all y'all said it i ignored you i apologize for that <laughs> i i do apologize for that Oh, hold on. Pipelines, WordPress, pipelines, user, and the password is password one, two, right? Right. Is that it? Hold up. Let's see if we can see, let's see if we can see what's going on here. Um, let me make sure, uh, pipelines where, let me copy this first off pipelines, WordPress, just to make sure I got everything right here. Try again. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 now my host is right. Uh, my host is right. I'll tell you what's wrong. I will tell you what is wrong. No, this is the right, this is the right host. Uh, Horizons, yeah, that's the right host. What's wrong is the port. Uh, port 3306 is not mapped right. I have to expose RDS, 100%. You got it, you got it. Uh, so let's go out of here. Uh, so I have to uh, stop this. Container.
So I don't know if any of you who are Docker connoisseurs, I don't know if you knew that you could just put in uh, a, a, the the same way that you do a tab complete, you can put in the uh, enough letters to fully identify uh, the container ID and it will it will automatically find it. Uh, so if I do docker.b, because it's the only one with B, it will stop this container, uh, which is really nice, saves you some time copying and pasting. And so I'm gonna rerun a container. And so port 8080 goes to port 80. I'm also going to do a dash P and I'm gonna do 3306 to 3306. So I have to expose these ports. Remember, containers are also isolated from the host machine. Um, and so, you know, this, this is what helps with that. So now this is gonna change. I'm gonna refresh this page because it's gonna be different now. English, let's go. Database username. The database name is, is Pipelines WordPress. The user is Pipelines user. The password, of course, is the best password in the world, which is password12, capital P. The host is Horizons table prefix. No! It feels right. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Pipeline's WordPress is right. Pipeline's user seems right. One, two. So hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Database host. Uh, do you need the protocol on the host? Um, no, I shouldn't need, I shouldn't. I shouldn't need it on the host. Maybe I do though. That's that's very interesting. Like you saying, like having uh, like MySQL. Hmm. Why have MySQL client? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um. Okay. This. I mean, this is dumb. No HTTPS to to access it. Correct. No HTTPS to access it. But maybe it's host. Oh, whoops. 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 I wonder if I have to do. Darn it. Hold on, hold on. Maybe I have to do, when you gave perms, you allowed, uh, oh yes, I only allowed from localhost. You are correct, there we go. You reference the host name uh, and the web setup. Yep, 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 100%. You're right, see that's what happens when we're rushing. Whenever we're short on time and you're rushing through, that's what happens. So, uh, the reason why is because I gave access to this user at localhost, I need to go back into MySQL and change that. All right, and so it was this command, right? Uh, it was the grant privileges on pipeline start to uh, pipelines user at localhost. Okay, localhost is the uh, is the local address for your your computer that exists. Uh, it, it is the host name for your computer. Uh, so I need I can do a star. I should be able to do a star here and plus the privileges. Go stalker. Perfect. Thank you for saving me. I appreciate that, I, 100%. I say that with genuine appreciation because uh, your boy is, uh, you know, get late in the day, you're rushing because we were supposed to be out of here by nine. And you know, you just gotta go in and you gotta uh, fix some stuff and hopefully this will work. Uh, try again, star works, right? I'm pretty sure star will work. A pipeline's user, password one, two. Let me make sure, oh, but also, wait, the create command. The create command is probably a problem, isn't it? Uh, oh, the wildcard for it. See, this one, when you haven't been working with this stuff in a while either, this, uh, you forget that, that's the wildcard for all here. Also, there's the create command. Okay, let's, let's try that. Thank you. What's the dot doing there? Where's the dot at? The dot, uh, um, oh, because, the dot was the original, uh, that's, that's the database name uh, and all tables. I think that's, I, I that should be, that seems like the nomenclature that's correct for this. Uh, so basically to everything on pipelines, uh, to all tables on pipelines, let me go ahead and give all access to those things. Um, to pipelines user, is the create an issue? Connect the DB with the new user as a test. Yeah, I can do that too. Uh, yeah, let's do that. That, that. That's a really, see, that's a really good test right there. If I now try to connect as pipelines user with password 
Access denied for, okay. So anywhere doesn't work uh, using password. That didn't work. Um, let me see. Do I need to go back in and use, let me see. Why can't you write the DB? Why can't you just write the DB name? DB name? We have written the DB name. Um, we, we can, uh, oh, okay, I see what you mean. Yeah, I need to do that actually. Oh, come on, D, let's get on out of here. So that one didn't work because I didn't try to connect to, what's the DB name? The DB name is Pipelines WordPress. Access denied uh, at this. So we, we cannot connect via, via that name. Hold on. So let's, let's see what our, let's see what our problem is. One second. We are root. When we're root, we're fine. Let's, um, it might've been my create user command, to be honest, create database. Um, oh, do I need, so can I do this? Um, what happens if I do this? and do the password one, two here. Um, let's try that. All right, so that does it. Cool. Uh, so now we can just go back over here. We can go pipelines user, password is password one, two. Now we're in. We are in, now we can run the installation. That was a lot of work. That was, you know, that's what happens when you, uh, you know, don't mess with uh, any any MySQL for a little while. I'm a huge fan of NoSQL tables, uh, NoSQL databases. Again, not, not, not always the right tool for the job, but I'm a huge fan of NoSQL. Uh, any application that I start, I will design it pure. I don't care. I will make sure it works around NoSQL table. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> uh, so our, our test site, I just call it pipelines. Uh, username will just be test and our password. Well, obviously password one, two, you can all log into this, even though I shouldn't let you log into this. We're going to delete it in a second. Confirm use of weak password, uh, test at example.com and install WordPress. This will get it installed for us and ready to go. And we now have it. Oh yeah. I could have added the flush privileges. Yeah. Right at the grant select insert update delete. That is a better option. Uh, definitely a better option. So now if you go to this website, which I'll paste for you, the site is up. The site is here. There we go. We have a pipeline site right here. You can access it if you go to that right there. Uh, but again, this is simply that, um, this experience is simply that these Two pieces of the application are in two completely different places. They are they are not located on the same machine at all. Uh, basically, the, the connection string that's been created between the two is now when you hit what, what, what's happening when you hit that website when you hit um, that IP address, it is first being intercepted by the web server. Okay, so the request coming straight into Apache. Apache is taking that thing in and it is breaking it down and it is sending it, it's routing it uh, to the proper places. It gets routed to a location in the container that has all the files for, uh, that has all of the files for WordPress. When it hits that, when it hits those files, it begins to get the information it needs and render out the page. It actually makes requests over the network to the database. Uh, and, it, and it submits queries to that database, directly to the database, uh, submits those queries, gets the information back, puts it all together, renders out the page for you. So it is, it's there, it's working, uh, but this is a distributed computing model. The database is completely separate from the rest of the application. A very small way to do it. Again, what would this provide us? Uh, this, so this doesn't give us the same, this doesn't give us the same functionality, like all those pros, uh, this setup in particular doesn't really give us all of those things. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the way that WordPress is built, to be honest. Um, but that fault tolerance and stuff in a situation like this, uh, this that doesn't really count. If the database goes down, this whole site goes down. Uh, same thing as if Apache goes down, this whole site goes down. Um, so we don't really get that from this, but that, that has to do with more about the way that WordPress is built. But you know, just, just know that now you don't have to have services working on the same system. You can have services running on whatever your services, your application needs to run. You can have them in different places. 
in a distributed manner and you can you can contact them and get information from them over the web okay over a network that's all you need to really know about we did all that just to just to tell you what distributed computing was uh but yeah you know it's up it is it is running if you want it uh let's see this is what we did for like 50 wordpress sites ec2 for the wordpress installations s3 for the media assets that's so that's a, that's a great point actually so uh let's go back into really quick let's draw another um thing here let's open this back up that's a really good thing that you said here uh for something like wordpress you could do that where you could have the lamp stack over here that actually is processing everything it could be grabbing all of the the information from the database down here so the database uh but things like images and media assets so different downloads and stuff like that can be you know also offloaded to another data store so maybe you have another um how do, how do they usually draw data stores like this? I don't know, maybe they draw databases like that, but maybe an S3 bucket or something like that. And you can have your assets here. And sure, they can be served over a CDN uh, or you can have one NFS. I like that, you could absolutely. So if you have, that's what it, that's great. That's what an NFS is for. If you, uh, if you have it more like this and you have multiple ones of these. So lamp, and maybe you have a bunch of front ends, lamp, Maybe you do want something like an NFS to share, which is a network file system that can connect to all three at once. Uh, and then all of them still, uh, all, of, all of these still gotta connect over to the database over here uh, if they want. But yeah, just you can split up the stuff and it's pretty dope. Uh, it's pretty interesting. Uh, what's up, Rich88? How are you doing? What is up, Trip? Good to see you. What's up, Jen, Gene Surfer? Welcome as well. What's up, Zang? How are you doing, Teardle? Welcome to the channel, Ghost Stalker, Snow Wolf. Good to have you. But that's it. Uh, yeah, that's the Juicy Horizons crossover. So that was all of the cloud information you're gonna get uh, right up front in the pipelines course. Um, so again, all, all the cloud is, is it is uh, distributed network computing resources that you can grab on demand. Uh, you pay for what you use. That is essentially what the cloud is. It is someone else's computer. Um, great. That's, that's what you know about the cloud. Uh, you learned about some of the different providers, AWS, Azure, uh, Google Cloud Platform, some other smaller providers as well. Uh, and distributed computing, what the cloud does, remember it's a bunch of different services that you can take and you can put together like Legos to be able to create solutions that you want to create. That's what that's why people like the cloud so much. On demand, uh, you can put together the things like Legos to create what you want. Great, very, very exciting distributed computing model, use the different pieces, very exciting. We will do on, so that's that's all you're gonna do for the cloud for now, even though we're gonna be building in the cloud all next week. On Wednesday, we will be doing uh, CICD. So we're gonna hop in, you're gonna learn all about what uh, CICD is, com, you know, continuous integration, continuous delivery, and the third CD or the, the third the second CD, which is continuous deployment. We'll learn about what that is. And then we will hop in likely to GitHub Actions. I haven't chosen yet whether we're gonna do GitHub Actions or if we're gonna use Circle CI. I do like Circle CI a lot, but we'll dive in and we will actually uh, build and it will, we will build a pipeline uh, using uh, GitHub Actions so you can understand how that works. We'll actually take it from from conception to to actually deploying to automatically deploying an application all in one day. It'll be like a little lab workshop, and then all next week we'll be doing Terraform stuff. If you're coming back through tomorrow, uh, so people who are new, Tuesdays and Thursdays are decoded. So this is software engineering, computer science, all this week. We will be doing practice problems. We'll be diving into how to uh, more effectively use functions. We'll be talking about scoping this week as well. Uh, so we'll just be getting practice with, with those things. Scoping and functions is what we're doing all week. This week in Decoded. And on Friday, what's the last thing we're doing on, on Friday? We are diving into, on Horizons, we're diving into, come on, come on, where'd you go? On Friday, we're diving into, uh, we did that. Oh, yes. So if, if you want, if you want a precursor to what we're doing next week, if you want a precursor to what we are doing next week in this course uh, on Friday, come on through. We are doing a cloud formation workshop and a, C, a, a cloud formation and CDK workshop. We will spend about an hour and a half in cloud formation. We're actually gonna do CDK first. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna spend about an hour and a half in the, in the CDK. And then we're gonna spend about an hour and a half in cloud formation. Um, and this will be a precursor. This won't be the same stuff. Next week we're doing Terraform. Uh, and so it'll, it'll help you out. 
So this Friday class, the Friday class is, is cloud computing specifically with AWS. Uh, CDK stands for the Cloud Development Kit. And what it allows you to do is it allows you to write to write code, uh, to write uh, code in the coding languages that you know about like Java and, and C and you know a bunch of different languages, TypeScript, uh, to be able to provision cloud infrastructure inside of AWS. So I can give AWS my, I can write some TypeScript and give it to AWS and then they'll, they'll say, cool, Got it. I, I see that you want a EC2 instance with this, these kind of settings. I want, we want an S3 bucket, a CDN, all the other stuff. It's great. So this is, and this CDK is, is specific to AWS because this course is specifically around Amazon Web Services. And CloudFormation is also a an AWS specific tool. You'll be able to see the differences between them. It'll give you a lot to talk about in the interview to be 100% honest. So that's what we'll be doing on Friday. So lots of code, uh, but like starting on like Friday, uh, well, starting on, on Wednesday until starting tomorrow, actually, because we're going to be writing tons of code tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be coding a lot for the next three weeks and all the courses. Uh, we're going to be writing a lot of code. So come on through. I'm glad you can. I'm glad you you stumbled through as well. Uh, I appreciate everyone coming through. Got to get out of here. Got to go eat some dinner, even though I ate a little bit of dinner before we started. Scarf some dinner now. I'm starving. Got some work to do. Come on through tomorrow if you want to come on through tomorrow. Uh, we're going to head over and we're going to raid somebody. We got to raid someone. We can't leave without doing it. Who are we going to go say hello to? I was really hoping the Alt F4 stream was on tonight. Uh, Mr. CM's on. Let's see. Appreciate everyone. Thanks everyone who came through tonight. All the new people. Welcome. Hope you come on. Hope you got to learn something tonight. Glad to see you. Let's head over to the so random my friend stream was happy. Yeah, I, you know, if, if you all ever have anyone you'd like me to raid in the science tech channel, I really do. We, we're really raiding to one, help build the community. Two, to help introduce you to new people you may be able to learn a ton from. Uh, I learn a lot from a lot of people here on Twitch. And so I want to head over and say hello to, let's see, let's do a viewers low to high. And again, let's let's jump down to someone who has a lower viewer count and that's doing something cool that we like. I scroll down much farther. Oh, I did low to high. Let's do high to low. Absolute peace out, everybody. Yeah, see him, Griffin. We, we head over to see him all the time. Um, I do like Mr. Griffin. I, I, I love seeing Griffin's channel. Let's head over to. Um, all right, Crazy Legumes. Game Dev Monday. Uh, game Dev. Uh, let's see. Monitoring Kubernetes with Pixie. Great. We're on pipelines. We're going to head over to. Uh, I, I mean, I wonder if this is actually New Relic. I doubt it's actually New new Relic. Juicebox. We hit up Juicebox before. We'll hit up Juicebox again for sure. Peace out, Abon. We're going to head over to somebody. We're going to head over to this person who's doing some Kubernetes stuff to, to Mr. New Relic or Mrs. New Relic. It looks like a guy in the picture. Uh, but let's see. Raid. Let's head over to. They would be selling New Relic if it was 100%, but that doesn't look like they're. You know, we'll see, Mr. New Relic. We'll see, we'll see what they're selling over here and we'll say hello. So head over there. Peace out everyone. Thank you again for another great night. Hope you learned something. Hope you got something out of it. Hope you made a friend or two. Uh, you know, good luck on your on your journey. I'm about, to, I'm about to go do some more work, which is kind of sad. But peace out everyone. Have a good night.